You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. I'm like, whoa, whoa, what's happening? We're arresting you for human trafficking in modern day slavery. From this point on, nothing else I can't report that this, I can't report on these men, I can't highlight these men, and if anything, people need to be aware of this. And then, and then the post blew up, and that's it, I just then had to said to everyone, I said, watch this, fucking Tommy Robinson's gonna be here. And I said, and you know she's falsely accused other people, so you know what's gone on. He's here to stitch us up, he doesn't give a shit, he is a racist then, or he is a, um, a Muslim hater, or a uh, Asian hater, or coloured person hater. What I said is, these men are innocent, I actually, my words, these men are innocent to proven guilty. They might walk out of that court and go home. Yeah, I'm not saying, I'm not presuming they're guilty at all. What I'm saying is, here's what they've been charged with. Yeah, this is how many of them there are. This is the crimes they're alleged to have done. I said alleged the whole time. And as they walked in, I said, how do you feel about your verdict? I don't agree with the radicalisms. I don't agree with any anything that's radical. Oh, you know, the bombings and the killings. No, no, just totally wrong. That is, Islam does not say that. And you know that's what's on me. If you leave Islam, you'd be killed, which is why Lots of the Islamic countries is punishable by death. Mm. Now, my thing is, like, you might stop the average Muslim in the UK. I bet if you ask Mo, if someone changes their mind and wants to leave Islam, he, he don't want to kill him. You know, I don't know. That daddy be called a pedo. Daddy be called a pedo. That's what he said to me. And it hurts you when you son, you know, your old son is saying that. It's. And boom, we're on. Oh, well. today's guests, we've got the man Tommy Robinson and Mo Rami. How are these guys? I'm good, mate. I'm good. I've done a lot of podcasts, Tommy. I've done a few with yourself now, but people's always asked you to sit across with a Muslim man as well. But you two have got a lot in common like, for people to understand that you've actually saved Mo's life, basically. Well, yeah, sa yeah. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I've saved his life. You know, you, you I, I, I'd say you, you you played a part in saving. Uh, Saving me from a lot of grief. Yeah, it's, yeah. My yeah, yeah. The MP might not agree with it, but I think <laughs> it is, it is, it is yeah. what it is. <laughs> but you did. Yeah, you because there's a lot, obviously, there's, everybody always tells you with that racist brush, yeah. let's be honest. But with what you've done here, there's got to be some sort of credit as well, because you were, says you were involved in a grooming gang with a young girl, 12 years old, travelling around the world with her. Yeah. Your whole right. life would destroy it. This girl put a post out on Facebook. It was shared over 100,000 times. All the celebrities were sharing it. And it turned out that the girl was just a nutcase. That like, she's destroyed your life, your kids self-harming. Like, and the only person who tried to do the right thing was yourself. Like, for people to call you a racist, you could have easily walked away from that. So there's got to be some sort of credit that you stood by this man. Why? Um, I wouldn't say I need credit. Because I just my job was to go up and report the truth. I went up there with an intention of getting him, if I'm oh, honest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I'm honest, my, my intention was, so I, I traveled to Barrow, the case was put up, a girl put up online saying, it fitted everything. She named the same cities. I've been a victim of these grooming gangs. There's been a cover up, I'm finally coming true. She's beaten black and blue in the images. It was a terrible looking image. And it suited, it fitted the narrative of what's been going on in most towns and cities, the cover ups in most towns and cities, and the girl's put straight in jail. So at that point, Everyone's like, what's going on? This is a big cover up. I traveled up there. Um, I got to Barrow and I started asking around and I found out about a boy who she'd falsely accused of rape. Yeah. And a boy called Jordan. And I went to his house and that's the first thing I'd done. I went to his house. I said, tell me what happened. And she'd ruined his life. He spent four months in jail. She got him remanded. Yeah. She made Snapchat accounts. So he, the reason why I got remanded and when I started reading the, I read everything. Yeah. I spent, I read everything, the whole case that, that he had. He, she, she was laying on the floor nearly unconscious and rang, and the police had been called and she come, they come round, she's laying there pretending, yeah? She's laying there like on the floor, blood everywhere. And then they think she's dead. And then she gets up and says, I've been, she's been raped by Jordan Trengrove. They then, she's, and she created a Snapchat account on her own phone, sent herself messages. So when she showed the police, the police think, well, we've got threats from him, yeah? They give him bail for the rape. She says he's come around and done it again. She created more evidence. Yeah. So when the police have seized her phone, months into the investigation, when he sat in remand for months, it's, it, he's feeling suicidal, he's in with paedophiles, they've realised she has created an account herself. 
on her phone in his name. Yeah, she set him up there. So as soon as I found that out, I sat there and that, that was it. Like once I knew that, I wasn't sure if he's guilty. Yeah, but he can't be judged as guilty. And he can't just not be judged as guilty, but there's 2,000 people in this car park who are up here raging. Businesses have been closed down. Some Muslim, Muslim businesses have all come under attack in the town. The, the rumours are going around about every Muslim business in the town, basically. And so from that point, I thought, well, she can't be trusted. Yeah? So nothing else can go... From this point on, so I knew straight away, well, from this point on, nothing else... I can't report that this... I can't report on these men. I can't highlight these men. And if anything people need to be aware of this yeah and then i went and found a boy at school that she'd accused of rape she well, she went to the police when she was at school and said yeah, a boy raped at the age of 16 at the age of 16 i knocked on the boy's mum's door and she just went please no tommy please and she said i know why you're here please don't do this he, he his life was destroyed yeah well, he was on bail for six months at tommy yeah you know, at the age of 16 a kid being on bail yeah. at six months imagine you're having to go to college you're having to go to school and you're in barrow barrow itself You've been, you've seen what? Barrow's a special place. <laughs> <laughs> That's one word. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and it, it, it mud sticks in Barrow. No matter what you do, everybody knows everybody and everyone has an opinion or judgment on somebody. And so 16 years of age, man, that kid, not, not right, is it? So if you look at that, where somebody's going from 16, then Jordan Trengrove. And when I got arrested, it, it's, it's uh, what's it, Anjum Chowdhury, it's a 7 7. 9-11. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's 7-7 seven, seven when I got arrested. What's it, 7-7? Seven, 7-7. Seven? Seven, seven. No. Yeah. We're laughing. The reason why we're laughing is because yeah. Anjem Chowdhury, my mate was a cameraman with Anjem Chowdhury, and when they said, can you count to 10, this is his famous thing. He goes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 7, 9, 11. <laughs> and he's just trolling all the time, and I was telling him, yeah. I was telling him about when, what he said, so that's where we got that. So, so when did you get through under the bus then? When did, how did your name get involved? My name it goes back to now, if you go to 2016, 2017... My name got involved then, and it was on the Great Mill. Uh, it was all on the outs uh, on the out on the outside of it that I'm an uh, enabler. I'm a paedophile synth synthesizer. I support paedophilia. Uh, prior to that, I was a, a drug dealer. My van got stopped eighteen times. Eighteen times. My, my lad and my vans and never business. It was just constantly. Uh, we were under siege by the police, right? And ice cream vans. Uh, ice cream vans. Yeah, the ice cream vans constantly. And it was just basically, and there was drug searches and stuff. But at the time. The DC Scott Levitt uh, came and another DCI came when we employed that Sarge and he was apparently, he, he's got a couple of cases or whatever, I, I, which I don't know the depths of, but I know some of it, some parts of that is bullshit because we've got, we've got evidence of that. I've got evidence of it. And that, they came to see me and they said basically that, oh, uh, you've got him working. We're a bit concerned. And I said to him, what do you want me to do? Do I have nothing as long as he's not on his own? I went, he isn't, because he my son at the time couldn't get insured on the van, because he was 18, and he had to be 20 on the vans, ice cream vans. And so he was just basically a driver for us. And that was it. Then the target became the, the blue van, the yellow van, the red van. They got paedophiles, paedophiles. And then I'm sticking up for him. I'm speaking innocent. Like, like that time he came for me, innocent until proven guilty. I, if, if I was a wrong one, he would have brought me down. He would have, oh, the, the police would have brought me down. I would have got done. But if this lad's a wrong one, let the, let the system take his course and find out. I did a DBS check. I worked within the realms of the law. Me and my partner, we lived in the police station for a few years. And I kept saying to him, there's something bigger happening here. You're not seeing it. There's something bigger brewing here. There's something bigger brewing here. And there was constantly, then from a drug dealer to from drug dealer to a pedophile uh, enabler, synthesizer. And, and that was it. Then it just blew. And then bloody go, going to go and get some stock. One day, it was a Sunday driving down the promenade and this is the hilarious part of it to me I, this, I find this hilarious I'm driving down the promenade to go to Booker's on my car stops me I'm doing 50 55 miles an hour on a 30 mile area <laughs> right oh no and I've just got my license back two weeks I've got my fucking license back and I'm, and I'm doing 50 55 <laughs> blue lights and I just thought to myself you you knob why have you done this? I just, honestly, it was just like, why? And oh, I thought, think if, oh, it's two weeks, it might take me last. I'm more scared of going on telling the missus I've, I've been done for this. And next minute, it was just like, uh, is it more? More? I thought, I got this isn't on my car, the uh, CID, uh, Volvo 69 plate, I'm thinking, six, sorry, 67 plate. I'm thinking, I'm just not more, more. I thought, Mohammed, went, yeah, is it Ram, Ram, Ram? Ram. The, that's how the cop was talking to me, like, ram it, ram, ram it, ram it. I went, Ramzan, yeah. 
oh, get the car key, let's have the car key, let's turn it off, turn it off. I just turned it off. I said, yeah, I thought, what's happening? You know, what, what's this about? I thought, come on, I said, I've just got my license, passed my license. I'm like, as I've got out of the car, my door, my hand's on the door, I'm getting out of the car. And the, the lady officer stood at the back of the, the, my, my BMW and, and he's like, let's do sign language. Am I, am I not here? I'm like, can I, I can see you, you know? And he's like, this is sign language, get the handcuffs, say it. What? I said, can you tell me what was my, first I said to him, what's my driving over? What's my motoring offence officer? The exact words were, what is my motoring offence? Nothing. And it's more, more, more all that done. Then he got, as I said to him again, I said, what's my driving offence uh, officer? Your fit, number plate, plate is faded. My back number plate is faded and I'm doing 55, 50 miles an hour. <laughs> what, are you, what are you stopping me for? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. And then he goes, as soon as they grab me, boom, she puts the handcuffs on. On one hand, while well, it's a coupe, windows down, there, bang, handcuffs there. I'm like, whoa, whoa, what's happening? We're arresting you for human trafficking, modern day slavery. At that point, I, honestly, I laughed. I computed, I thought, I've been done for uh, having illegal immigrants working. I thought it's basically, they, I'm not paying the wages, or it's illegal immigrants, or something along those lines. Next minute, I'm little I knew I'm stood on the road. I'm stood on the bloody road, handcuffed. People are driving by, taking pictures of me. <laughs> I bet one of them was your detective. <laughs> <laughs> and all pictures are being taken off me. And I'm, I'm just, I had to say to him, can you please put me in a car or take me to Bala Police Station? So a police station just around the corner. Now, about five of them turn out of nowhere. An Amrock, a uh, Volkswagen Transporter, pulls up. Uh, and a Volkswagen pickup, Amrock. Another five coppers. They're going through the car like I had a body or something in it. I'm thinking, what, 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 do you think I've got any, uh, uh, immigrants in the car or something? That's what uh, my head is. Uh, they've not said sex exploitation or rape or anything at that time. Until I, until I got, uh, they got me to Kendall. When they, when they started running off there, and when I said to them, just take me around corners, but Barrow Police Station, they go, Barrow Police don't want you. That was the answer. Why does Barrow Police not want me? What was the problem with Barrow Police Station giving me custody there? Uh, instead, they took me to Kendall. And then, but yeah, when I got to the desk, you know, the biggest thing is everyone keeps going on about, and, and, on, and you keep getting social media, oh, he was caught with drugs. I told the sergeant, I had a bit of like a wrap of cocaine. I have got it there at home. Please don't let my children see it or let me partner. I said, it's there. You know, I held my hands up straight, but that's the only thing I knew I was guilty of. If you're searching my house, you're going to find that. And cool, no problem. And then he goes, you know what the charges are? I went, yeah, human, uh, traf uh, human trafficking, modern day slavery. Yeah, and then he goes, sexual exploitation, gain of a thing, uh, my ra no, no rape at the time. It was just trafficking, it's, it's fucking shit, I don't know. And I just went, whoa, whoa, I thought. At that time, I was like, you know, come on, let's get, lads, come on, let's get this done. I need to get back to work. Let's get this, in, you know, let's get the interview done. Soon as the sergeant said that to me, I thought, I just went, solicitor, please. <laughs> you know, I need a solicitor here. Can I, I can't get my own. It's too long. Can I get a duty solicitor? <laughs> I just get me somebody. I, I, and that was it. And, you know, bang, the head went. I thought, bloody hell. You know, I'm a lot of things, but this. So see when that girl posts that she was beaten and your name was involved. She didn't name. But this, no, she, she didn't name, name it. But this no is the post. Not, a lot of people didn't know it was you. No, they did. When did they find out? Okay. The, the, the post they went a year later. This is now J July uh, 7, 7, 2019. I've been arrested. And 2020 May, she does the post. And But the way they did it, it was done very strategically. You know, some of the uh, messages she's put up and there was number, my name was marked, rubbed up, but it always said more. Okay. More, M-O. There's only one more in that town. More Rami. And there's only one more Rami, you know what I mean? <laughs> and that was it. And it was just, it, and it just blew up. And that was, pff, that was when the actual trouble kicked off. I could deal with the, just the local stuff. That was, it was it, I mean, you don't want to deal with it, but you, you're having to go through it. And then, and then the post blew up. And that's it. I just, then I just said to everyone, I said, watch this fucking Tommy Robinson's going to be here. Yeah. Uh, and I was just like, fucking great. That's all we need. <laughs> Tommy <laughs> Robinson. So see when everybody's <laughs> against you, see when your whole world comes crashing down, yeah. everybody thinks you're annoying. So it's the worst yeah. label you can ever have on you. No. How did Tommy end up involved? Like, what was the steps? Did you know who Tommy was prior? Uh, 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 mate. Mate, I did he know I was wrong. So I've got, I've got there and started investigating. And, yeah. by the, and I, my thing, because of the charges, I don't care about any people said, oh, we think this. And yeah, a lot yeah. of people had a problem with Mo, it yeah. seemed. Yeah? It seemed to do with ice cream wars. There was a lot of territory to do yeah. with who's got I, which ice cream round in different town. A lot of people would say a lot of things. But I said, I'm here to listen about tra trafficking of young children 
and rape of children, yeah? And then as, as we're looking into I, I spoke to lots of young girls who would have worked with him at some time. So asking everyone, what's he like? What's this? No one come back with any, any of those allegations at all. Yeah. And then when I started looking through, and then I found doubt after doubt after doubt with the girl, um, different people she's accused. And then that, that's when I approached approached each Muslim, a couple of Muslim, Muslim families. Time, yeah. And I was waiting by, uh, I, I was, I was, we found his ice cream van and I, I was waiting there. And then you've come out and said, fuck off, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> yeah. What do you want? And I was like, I said, and I see your son. Yeah, I see, I see your son as well, who looked a lot younger, man. I see he your does, son. Yeah, he's grown up, man. And I said, look, I said, I'm just here. I want to ask Mo some questions. Because Mo's name had been thrown in the mix because there was allegations against someone who worked for him at one time. Oh, yeah. yeah? That had gone around the town. And those allegations are to do with an up, uh, upcoming case, is it still? Upcoming? Yeah, apparently. An, yeah, up, yeah. an upcoming case. So, but he worked with Mo. So, it, and then I went around asking everyone about him. And I asked everyone lots of questions found out everything about you where your family were you yeah. in bolton in this yeah, yeah. all these different things and i'm looking at it but there was still nothing to say that this girl's telling the truth there's nothing to back up that she's telling the truth but we know she's lied about this this and this so i come to ask the questions that people would want asked about and 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 you've told me fuck off i've said listen there's a lot of discrepancies in what I'm hearing. I'm not, I'm not here to do anything other than to find the truth if the truth doesn't suit my narrative i just want to find the truth yeah so can i speak to mo and then mo rang me and um, Mo, I, I gave him my number, Mo rang me, I come to his house to ask him questions. And my trigger moment, I walked in your house. I, I, as I'm walking in the house, someone shouted racist out of the car window. And as he's opened the door, someone shouted nonce. <laughs> yeah, and then she adds, I love you, Tommy. <laughs> I love you, Tommy. No. I love fucking brilliant. The attention's here. <laughs> what are you thinking, though, when Tommy at your door? Do you think he's trying to set you up? Are you uh, thinking... Uh, you know what? Things I'm, are going to get worse. I'm, I'm, yeah. Things were the, the two way. I, I was the way I seen it. It was two ways. Either it would get worse, but then he's not. He, then it's bullshit. I know it's bullshit. Then he's not. He, then uh, this is the respect I've got for Tommy. Then he's not doing his job right now. Mm. Then to me, he's there to cause the trouble. Everything that we watch, we follow, or the Asian Muslim community thinks about uh, Tommy is true. Then he basically he's here to stitch us up. He doesn't give a shit. He is a racist. Then or he is a, um, a Muslim hater or a uh, Asian hater or coloured person hater. But he didn't. He didn't. He didn't do any of that. The man sat in front of me, and I've, and I've, and I've been in contact with the guy now for a while, and it's he's never once made me feel that I was I I, I couldn't trust him. Or I, I shouldn't be working with him. I shouldn't share my stuff with him. If anything, he give me confidence. If anything, he give me confidence. And one of the biggest things was I used to always say to my my partner and everything: the the abuse we were getting, all the all the hate messages, or you're disgusting. So which you don't need. You know, the property's being damaged, the cars being damaged, the ice cream vans being smashed, the constant behaviour threat. You know, we had to shut our shops now. We were an interior shop. My partner's an interior designer, and she's got a Christmas shop, all year round Christmas shop. Nicely done. Yeah, Very and we nice had to done. shut that down for over two and a half years. My worry was because I am being stitched up. I am being stitched up here, but not by Tommy. Right? I'm being stitched up by this uh, the, the, this girl and, and Battle Police Station. They are aware, full aware of the history of it, and they've not done anything. Then I'm thinking, what about if somebody comes and actually puts an ounce or something in the shop? We don't know. Phone call done. Then who? Then I'm properly fucked, Anna. And I just thought, no, I just we'll just we'll just lose it. We are, we'll survive, but we'll just shut everything down. And it was a hard it was a hard three years. It was a hard three years. Just you know, but then basically just living off. Not much really. Handout, friends, saving, they go, the remortgaging this to pay that, remortgage that tenants or oh, properties got smashed, tenants were out, next door neighbours, tenants left. When the police search come, then fucking COVID, you know, that was a bit of a saviour as well. And uh, but I think it works both ways, <laughs> you know. What was your agenda, Tommy, when you started looking into the case further? Like what was your plan of action? Because you've never really done anything like this where People say you're against Muslims, this and that, but then you stood at the forefront with the only man who says this guy is innocent. Like, what I was your plan? I think I walked in and see your kids, kids as well. Yeah. I walked in and I, I've got... I, 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 you, did you say a bit of your life in that? Yeah, yeah, it did. I see the fact that I get called things, I get called a racist, labelled a racist, and I see the damage that's done to my children and in their social circles, in school, um, when Black Lives Matter blew up, my daughter had a terrible year due to the accusations of racism, all these things. And I looked and see his kid and then I sat for Jesus, like... Because uh, knowing knowing this girl's told multiple lies, yeah. This I'm sitting in his house with his family. Their life's fucked. 
He's got all CCTV cameras that are in the lap, not not put in the hallways. I have cameras. They're not sat in sat in so I'm looking at them all day. So he sat there with them on the sofa, watching, here knowing that they've been under attack. And I looked at the kids and just thought, Jesus. And he'd left college. You'd left college, right? School had to leave due to everyone presuming his dad to nonce. I thought about how difficult it must be for him and, and the kids. Yeah. I thought, Jesus, like your dad's being labelled as a paedophile off of a girl who has falsely accused multiple other men. Yeah. So straight, and then and then I knew there was lots of discrepancies, and I knew the family weren't telling the truth. El, this Ellie's the, the family, council, yeah, council, one, one of them was councillor for labour. Uh, Nan's in charge of ch charge of social services, yeah. And, I, and so, but the husband Ronnie, so I had someone following the husband. We were trying to locate him because they come out against me. The family did, yeah. We don't want him here at the start, and I found that suspicious. So as I was looking, and and and, and I walked, I walked out of it, one Muslim man's business, come out of his business. And he's, he's just told me, and when he turned up, he turned up with an English lad from London. And the lad goes, Tommy, I follow everything you do. This is when I first got to Barry. He goes, I follow everything you do. Yeah, I, I respect the work you've done. Do you think I'll be sat in here with him if he was an aunt, if he was a groomer? He goes, he ain't no groomer, bruv. He goes, this is bullshit, what's going on here? So he told me that. I'd heard, and then as I walked out the shop, another car pulled up. He goes, yes, Tommy. And that, some lad jumped out. I said, all right, mate, how you doing? He goes, he goes, are you here for the Ellie thing? I said, yeah. He goes, yeah, I used to work with her. I said, what's she like? He goes, yeah, she's all right. He goes, but she went around telling everyone I was having sex with her. And I said, was you having sex with her? He went, no, I wasn't having sex with her. So I was like, Why? okay, <laughs> this don't work. This don't work. Then I've gone and I'm trying to find someone else. And we're waiting. It. We've got a surveillance car outside someone's house. We're trying to track someone down. And then as I come out the side of the car, one of the women comes out of the house and says, Tommy, come here. And she said, what? She said, you're here for the Ellie thing? I said, yeah. She goes, my, my daughter's friends with her at school. She made serious allegations against someone else in her family, yeah? This is what the woman said. So I'm like, wow, right? So I, I knew straight away in those first few days that their life can't be destroyed based on what she said, yeah? So, and there still may be a risk she's a victim. Even when I sit in the house, I think there still may be a risk. Yeah? I've still got a lot more questions to ask of a lot more people. But these kids' lives, the wife's life and his life, can't be destroyed. Yeah? And neither can these businesses be shut down off the back of it. So I was there trying to find the dad. I get a phone call saying, we've got the dad. We, we know it. he's in KFC car park. So I said, all right. So I say to Mo, I say, right, mate, I'm going. Yeah. I've got to go, yeah. And I've only been there for five minutes. And I record, you know, I, yeah. I record everything, but yeah, yeah, but I didn't yeah, have yeah. cameras. Yeah. But I, called, I said, listen, give me five minutes. I'm off. Um, I'm going to shoot. And then I, I shoot and find him. And when I find him, I just ask him straight, when, when are you going to tell the truth? Like the whole country, not just the whole town's about a blow. You got two, you got people travelling here. It was the start of COVID. There's literally two thousand cars. Everyone from them, out of town, from out of town, from, people, out of people, town. people, people coming from everywhere from for, everywhere for a demonstration for this girl, which is based on bullshit. Yeah. So I, I've gone to the car park then, where the demonstration. I've gone, I've gone and found the dad and said, like, when are you going to tell the truth? And he said, no comment. And I said, oh well, yeah, what? I said. Why, why, when are you going to tell the, the public the truth? All these people are up here, yeah? There's a lot more going on than Muslim men have, have done this. Because, because, for example, if these, if these falsely accused people before were all white men, yeah? You falsely accused all these white men, now it can't just fit because it's the accusation that it's Muslim men, yeah? This can't just fit, no matter how much some people may want it to fit, this cannot be taken or the word of her can't be taken. And I said, and you know she's falsely accused other people, so you know what's gone on, and you're not telling anyone. So then they had this Justice Friendly campaign. They raised twenty thousand pounds. Everyone's going mad. Maggie Oliver's come Maggie in. Maggie Oliver. Celebrities have all come in. Girl out of Coronation Street's come yeah, in. All yeah. these people are coming. They're all blown up. It. And then and I just think I think based on what based on what I've found, and I find the dad and I say to the dad because I'm reading statements as well, and in this, all the statements, some of Ellie's friends are again making accusations against the stepdad. Yeah? There's that, but then again, there's accusations everywhere. So Ellie is telling so many people so many different stories about how she's injured, about what's happened. And then, uh, yeah, I'll go find the stepdad and come back to your house. And um, Who beat her up? Why did she have the bruises? She's on cat. She goes and buys a hammer during the day. She buys a hammer on CCTV. When she's beat up, they find a hammer. Yeah. So she's her, mentally it's only, her DNA. Her DNA. only her DNA. Only her right, DNA. Right next to her mum's house with the field. Uh, so she's she psychotic found. then. Was it dad dancing her? Well, no, you, again, I haven't said any, I haven't put forward other, there's lots of other allegations, but again, they're just hearsay or they're coming from her. Now, bearing in mind what she said about him, bearing in mind what she said about the other boys, you can't say what she, anything she said is totally unreliable. She, 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 was she in a home or anything? Was no. she, was her parents watching her? They must have knew that. 
Well, her mum's, her mum's a Labour councillor. Mum, and her, and her nan's them. in charge of social services. Children in, in, in Barrow. Her family... When like, did it start turning for you more? Like, when did you start believing, OK, that like this things are starting to go in your favour? Well, the favour, did you read it? When I, just January. January the 4th. Or when, actually, when the court, the trial took place. Just three weeks ago? So just, yeah, in uh, oh. October. When the I, had put, to I had put together, I was putting together everything. Please nick me. They gave me an order. I yeah. Can't, I, can't, I can't contact him. The basic gagged you. They gagged me. I can't they contact him. You. They named all these people I couldn't contact. All these, all these, I went not allowed into Cumbria. Yeah. They escorted me. When they let me go the next day, they gave me a police escort. They followed me all the way out of Cumbria. I said, what are you doing? Yeah. You're banned from Cumbria. So then, so then I was, I had to, I, I made a video. I said, all I can say is things are not as they seem. Yeah. So I sort of like allow people to know there's bullshit going on up here. Yeah. But I weren't allowed to say anything else. So if I was allowed to do my report, which I was building and doing, I would have put out straight away saying, listen. That, that would have been 2020. Yeah. And from 2020, I think a lot of the trouble that we as a family have had and as a community we've had in 2021, 22, coming up to this, you know what, if he, if he, was, if he did what he was set out to do then, Tommy would have it would have probably made my life a lot easier. Because yeah. a, a lot of people who don't trust the system and don't trust the police will trust me in, in what I'm saying. And I can't say that that girl's not been a victim of abuse somewhere along the line so, by someone who knows who, yeah? Because her life's messed. It's, it's pretty strange when you go mm -hmm. through the history of it and what she's done and all the different mad stuff she's done. It's, and, and then to still now not come out and speak the truth, truth. it's like she's covering for someone. She's covering something, yeah. So, I, I'd say. And, and, the, and the mother, the look at the mother. The, the mother's he's, still saying it. The mother's still saying it. But the mother's still saying he's a, he's a, it's him. It's me. And the mother knows me. And the grandmother knew me. The the auntie it was a one of our best friends. Right, we were always together with the auntie in a sense, weren't we? Yeah. Nick, Nick and and you for years. And I, I used to go and seek advice of the grandma. I got I got a, in a statement. She says that she was groomed. When she started working at the Elephant, which he, which Mo owned, yeah, yeah. So when I found her family, I the first thing I asked is, uh, where did Ellie work? What was her first job? And then blah blah blah. Did she work at the Elephant? And he said, no, she's never worked at the Elephant. Like she, she's a girl who's lived with her mum and dad her whole life. Yeah, they'd know if her first job was at his restaurant. Restaurant, yeah? exactly. They'd know. And I said, so I thought, well, that even that ain't true. Yeah. So this ain't true, this ain't true, this is a lie, this is a lie. And then, do you know what I realised as well, how dangerous, or the power of the media, yeah? Because there was enough there that I could have put together a report that made it look like it's him. Easily, yeah? Yeah. Made it look like yeah, there yeah, is yeah, a cover-up. Yeah. Yeah? Some people are still doing that now. I just watched a video, you, you sent yeah. me it, a video of someone, a, a, a Red Pill Red Phil, Phil, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is making videos accusing... Jordan, the boy who was falsely accused, accusing all of them. All of them. So implying that there's this big cover-up going on without knowing one single detail of this case. But I've read all of the details of this case. Mm -hmm. Lots of people pumped it. Maggie Oliver pumped it. They didn't even... They did, they're only an hour up the road. They didn't even go and contact the people. No. Even though they knew there was false claims, they still stood by the case. Now, I, now, this is the mad thing. So when the police went into... When the police arrested her for the... Arrested Jordan Trengrove, when they went into her house when she was laying on the floor... It, they took her phone. And this is how manipulative it is. They took her phone, and on her phone, in her deleted file, she had messages from Rami. Yeah? So I could have took that with the statement which I've got from the copper, which I've read to you. I went yeah, to your yeah, house to yeah, question you about yeah. this. So I went and said, what's this thing? Because I've got this which mentions you before. Yeah? What they also found is, madly, they also found love, uh, letters. Letters. Uh, letters. Rami letters. Yeah, letters to say that you'd wrote to her. But, yeah, say that he'd wrote to her. From when he was in jail, he hasn't been in jail. Uh, Dur Durham. Durham so they're saying I was in Durham prison at the time, but mm. I fucking wasn't. Where the handwriting experts, it's my, it's her writing. She would wrote herself letters. She says he stole her kid that she's never had. had. I was going to sell him, basically. One of the letters it indicates that I was going to sell him and sell him to somebody in Pakistan, and it would have made mine and her life. We would have been sorted. Is this? She must have mental health problems. She had mental health reports. Like she's psychotic. I asked, I asked man, the dad like, that. I asked or else the dad. somebody's telling her to do this, or she's deflecting away from somebody. Some, that's that's. Like, you, you, that's I don't think is. we're at the bottom of what's going on. No. I don't think any of the police are. Are either. you going to keep working on it until you find out, or uh, you, you had enough? No, I've still got a lot of questions to a ask. A lot of questions. I think. To yeah. who? Will she ever speak to you, that girl? Who knows? How old is she now? Twenty-two. Two. And she's just been charged with. Uh, nine, the course nine, of justice. Nine, nine, nine counts of preventing the course of justice. And one of the charges, she pleaded guilty mid-trial. Mid-trial, she basically, they arrested the mother, 
because there was evidence that got released, so the judge was basically given order. And mum knew, yeah? Yeah, mum knew. knew. mum knew 100%. Mum knew. I, I she works say, for the Labour Party. She, she works for the Labour Party. You know what? I, any other, I've, I've got uh, the uh, actor Zaman, the mayor of Bolton, is a good family friend, right? I know councillors all over the world, country, and I've asked every single body, and I put loads of complaints in regarding it. If this was any other town or any other council, would have what would have happened to you? They said we would have been suspended instantly. Mate, there's a hell of a lot going on in Barrow. Yeah, I yeah. Started, I started looking at the charities that are linked to the family. Family, yeah. It's like it seems like it's a closed web. Yeah, it's been under lockers. Making a lot of money. Well, it's been under lockers that's for years. Look, that's what I've started looking at: is what's going on in this town? How has this happened? What, there's funding like the million pound was given to a charity yeah. that the nans on on, on the trustee. Tr tr trustee and it's why you though? Why did they throw you under the bus? Why were you targeted? Was there a connection? Is it got to do with your businesses? Is that because yeah? yeah because when I because when I got into the ice creaming, uh, we started to we applied for the tra street trading license and stuff. And the reason they refused me, okay, I've got a bit of a history, so I, I, my DBS wouldn't have come clear, so I didn't apply for it. My partner applied for it, and my cousin that's done ice creaming for 35 years in Wigan, and he gets a Wigan Street Trading Licence every year, and he's been doing it for 35 years. They own the Manfredi Dairy, Dairy in Bolton, right? They've got about, we've got about 30 ice cream vans. And these two applied for the licence, and you know the Barrow Town Hall? Refused the licence under the basis of you're, you're affiliated with Mohammed Ramzan. And this was done in 2016 and 2017. W what have I done? What what does that mean? What does that mean? Because she's my partner. Or as in, to me, it comes two things. Either you've got a problem with an Asian man coming and doing the ice cream, but you didn't have a problem when I was had the bigger businesses and I was paying uh, 70 or thousand pound business rates. I was paying 30 or thousand in the George. You didn't mind then. But now I've come into that's not. But I'm, um, I, I don't know. But there, there is something in that town hall that was a right. Yeah, and see your mental health as well. You're not hitting yourself with bottles and suicidal as well. Yeah, did yeah I did. When did that take its toll on you? And that took me toll when I found my son. Actually, the build up of it, and he was he was he started self farming because he was getting abuse in college, and he was getting abuse on the van. He didn't tell me. I thought no problem. So then I got arrested, and now a week or two before he, we're dealing with my son in this state, then they arrested me seven seven nine nineteen. Then two weeks later, you know, he's, he had a meltdown and he just didn't want to be there. And his dad, let's move. Nicola's there. My mate Jonathan's there. And we're just like, and that was it. And seeing him, that, you know, going back and I just felt like I've, what have I done? You know, I've, I've, I've brought my kids to my life. I've, you know, I've, I've missed out on for the last four years, five years when I got married again, when I got with Nicola. I've, I've lost out in their life four or five years, which to me is my massive part. And, I bring him here, and now what, what have I done to the kid? You know, what, what, why is he going through this pain? And that, to me, was it just made me feel shit, man. That, that was, that was, and that keeps getting to me. And then I just, I just went on, I went on war. I went on the battle. I just went, I went survival, really. It was survival. Then I, I'm not going to, you know, your dad's been, that dad, you've been called a pedo. Dad, you've been called a pedo. That's what he said to me. And it hurts you when your son, you know, your oldest son is saying that. It's, it just, it does. It, and it's still, and now it, it was just, oh God, James, it was fucking horrible. And then I'm dealing with that and I'm dead, I've got to be strong. I've got to deal with after my family, man. I've yeah. got to, you know, I've got to look after my respect. I'm, I'm from a good family. I'm fair good play, man. mate. Even me just sitting, I can tell you're a good man. And like I say, you, you wouldn't burn this show and Tommy wouldn't be sitting with you if he, did, he thought you were guilty of no. anything like that. Like you say, we've all got past. We've all done fucking stupid shit. We're yeah. not here about that. We're talking about a massive scandal that celebrities actually came and supported that. Like, have you yeah. guys ever had an apology from anybody? Not a single one. Well, the same, when I got to the town, the same person who was supporting it, was telling everyone not to talk to me. So I'm there, said, we've been told not to, contact, to talk to you. And I'm like, and, I, and I, I don't know, I just said, all I want to do is find out what's going on and investigate what's going on. And that's it. And, and, and you know, because then we found, because there was things that were adding, like we found out that she'd been upstairs in above one of the restaurants, but you don't go through the restaurant to get to it, with a Muslim male, yeah? But then I found, so she's having sex with some Muslim males yeah, in the town. Now, then I'm thinking, right, is she a victim to these males? But then there's another Muslim male who's was found in bed with her one time, yeah? And there's text messages going back and forward where she thinks she's pregnant and he's messaging her. 
And all of the evidence doesn't say that. It, it's him messaging her saying, I want to be a part of, of, of the life. If, if you've got my baby inside, you want to help you. I want to this, I want to that. So when you go through what's being said, there's nothing being said that would, that would give any evidence to the fact of, the, of what she's claiming. Least of all, again, least of all, I, the problem is, you see, if she hadn't falsely accused Jordan Trengrove and falsely accused the boy at school and falsely accused someone else, he's probably be in jail. I'd be wound up. They were, like you, they, were, they, were, they were trying to remind me that day after that, they've had me 40 hours in questioning and I've gone in, I've, you know, it was disgusting. The questioning was disgusting. You know, I, I don't think that was professional in any of it. I mean, it's the, what the lady officer turned around and she goes to me, how's your sex life with your partner? You, you use, you, I thought, what, what do you mean by use? You know, you like, you, you, you're, then I said, what do you mean by use? You, you, you like younger girls though, don't you? Your culture, your religion. I thought, well, no, hang on. What's that got to do with religion and culture? I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm into me older women. I said, you know what? If I have an affair, I, I, and I did, you know what I said? I swear to God, this is just so God. I go, I, 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 I kind of, what's up? Fuck this. I'm, I'm not, I'm listening to this. I'm not such sitting here listening to this. I swear, you know what, love? I think you're a bit frustrated, aren't you? I don't think, how's your sex life? Are you getting it at home? Then the male, male officer speaks up and he goes, you know, it's a bit inappropriate. I went, is it inappropriate? I said, the question you're fucking asking me, aren't they inappropriate? I can't ask this. I said, you know what? I'll tell you something. And she goes, they thought, oh, he's going to confess something. I said, you know what? I, I was, if I did have an affair, it'd be probably with Nicola's mum, because I'm into me older women. I said, she's 80 odd now, so I'll probably be her next. Mm -hmm. and, and that was, that's what I had to do. That, that was just he, me. I come out of your house and said, like I said, when I walked out of his house, I said, he reminds me of himself. When I went through all the stuff he's done, because I thought that's how, it's, and, and I thought that's how he's dealing with it. Because like, I think this, these yeah. protests are going on, they're all calling him a accusing him of being a paedophile, he's gone down his ice cream van and put the ice cream van lights on as he's driving past, yeah. like waving that. Yeah, yeah. we was at the MEP elections. I got and jumped in the van. I thought, fucking Tommy's here, right? He's here. Yeah. I'm going to go and see him. <laughs> I see loads of So I just put my jingle on, drove around and went back. <laughs> mm. But it makes you angry and you feel as if you've got to stand at the forefront to prove that Proof, yeah. you're innocent. Yeah. So if you cower away, then you're, all, you're already defeated. You, you may as well be in the fucking the nonsense wing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, how hard was it for you to see somebody who was innocent Getting thrown under the bus. Well, I yeah. does that ever make you question? Because Previous. you were at the forefront with grooming gangs, yeah. like, uh, and no, it, 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 made you question. It think definitely more? made me. So previously to this, I'd done an investigation in Telford where I spent twelve to eighteen months with twelve girls, yeah, who were all been victims, and I detailed their stories, and only when the name men were named by three, yeah, did I go after the men, right? Because I thought we've got victim A, victim C, victim F. They don't even know each other. They're all telling me that Bugsy, this man, has done this, this and this, yeah? So then I know, because you, you can never, I, I could never go to a town, take one girl sitting here saying he's done this, because I don't know what mo motive she may have. I don't know what's happened, yeah, to, for her to be saying that. I can't go, and but it did make me even think more when I sat in his house thinking, Jesus, bro, like the effect of being labelled like this, yeah? yeah? The effect of being labelled like this, without a, fair, without a trial, I said, so what he's faced is trial by public opinion. I face that all the time but not for nothing like this. No. Yeah? So no, I, I face that and I can still walk around, but would I be able to walk around with sexual allegations against me where not just, where everyone bought into them, where everyone believed I was a nonce? Because he's in his town where everyone believes he's a nonce. But then still a lot of people are still coming up to me saying, no, he, he fucking in. He's a lad, right? He's a jack, the lad. He sticks it in your face a bit. He's a hot... <laughs> that, that, that's, so I, I said, but that doesn't make him a child trafficker. Yeah. Mm. So when, even when I sat with other people, yeah, but he's he, he's this and he's done this and he's and he's like this and this is sort. Of, I said that don't make him a paedophile. People yeah. wanted you to be there. Yeah, they yeah. did. Yeah. No, yeah. they did. A lot of people wanted him to. See that case as well, Tommy. You were outside with a camera and people were saying you could have jeopardised it. Does that could could you have jeopardised that? Does that make you think about the victims just in case you did? Um, no. So uh, people have been lied to about that case. Mm. What I said is these men are innocent. I actually my words. These men are innocent to proven guilty. They might walk out of that court and go home. Yeah. I'm not saying. I'm not presuming they're guilty at all. What I'm saying is, here's what they've been charged with. Yeah, This is how many of them there are. This is the crimes they're alleged to have done. I said alleged the whole time. And as they walked in, I said, how do you feel about your verdict? Now, previously to that, there had been a court case a few years before where when they're coming in, I said, you paedophiles. I was angry. They come in, one of them tried to square up. And I did presume their guilt. Yeah, But that wasn't this. Yeah, So that was another, and it was before any trial, so there was no jury. Yeah, But I realised I went on a training course myself before this last court case when I 
question them. I put myself in a training course with the best law firm in London because I'm, I'm a citizen journalist. I've become a journalist. I don't know the laws around court. I didn't know any of this stuff. So when I had my first thing down in Can Canterbury Court, which was a, there was a, a case where five men, a, a young girl was 15 and she was drunk and she got lost. She went to a kebab shop and said, do you know the way to this? They took her upstairs, five of them. They all raped her, yeah? Now this was, they were on bail. So they're on bail. This is the case. They're on bail. So I find out they're on bail. They changed the name of the shop. Just changed the name of the shop. So I went down. I looked and I spoke to the shop next door. I said, the school girl's going here. They said, yeah. I said, so at the end of school, there's kids in here. I said, yeah. I said, all right. So for me, that, I wanted to warn the people. So I waited outside the court the next day, stood on the steps, said there's men on bail. They're running a chicken shop. Yeah. And they're on bail for these allegations. Now, all those men were convicted. They got 20 years in jail. Yeah. They found all their DNA. She was raped in every hole she had. She, she was brutally raped and destroyed. One of them fled the country whilst he was on bail. Now, I was arrested. I went home from this little report I'd done outside the court and they come from my door at six in the morning. Yeah. Dragged me before the judge in Canterbury and he done me for contempt of court for filming because my feet were on the steps of the court. Yeah. So I thought, well, I don't know any of these laws. So I put myself on a course. Yeah. Spent thousands. Yeah. Put myself on a course with the best law firm in London to teach me about contempt of court, to teach me what I can and can't do. You can't presume guilt because you'll jeopardize the trial. I found out all the things I had to do. So when I went to Leeds, this is years later, I'd done everything I was meant to do. I went in, I took a photo of the screen because there was no mention of a, a reporting restriction. I took, and my, my issue was these reporting restrictions, which does it, does it change my mind on that? Probably in the sense that I don't think any man accused of rape, their name should be out there now. Yeah. After seeing what's happened to him, after seeing what's happened to Jordan Trengwife, after witnessing it myself, until they're convicted by a, by a, by a jury, then they should not have their lives destroyed. Yeah. That's because until they're convicted. So, that's, yeah. and that, and, but before, yeah, because I, yeah, before I probably wouldn't have been of that opinion because mm -hmm. every trial that come up or any name that come up, I guess I was presuming their guilt myself. Why do you think there's but, not much support for men, male, especially with things like this? Because no matter that girl's got a guilty, you're still going to have those question marks over your head. No I'm, matter what you say, but like why is why is there no support for men? Because girls should be getting bigger sentences. For a male getting a rape charge Judge. and getting four years, yeah. five years, girls should be getting fucking double. double. They're destroying lives for but they're accusations. It they're making, making it worse for real, victims. Real, yeah, real, yeah. Real victims. But why do you think men, we get the rough end of the stick? Because they, like, if some, a girl says that, that's like your charge, you're done. You're done. Like, no, that's why do you think male don't get the support that we, do, we, it, we should be getting the, as well? The, 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 the sensitivity of the of the uh, uh, accusation, isn't it? It's the Me Too movement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, when I went up to Jordan Trengrove and I found out that, say like Mag Maggie Oliver's organisation were fully supporting Ellie. Yes, they were. So Jordan Trengrove s sends her all the information that she, he's been falsely accused of rape. She continues supporting Ellie. Yeah. No one supports Jordan Trengrove. No one support. I said each time, has anyone contacted you? Any organisations, any groups, anyone counselling? Not a single thing. So for two years, these men, these men, and the police are fully aware, the council are aware that this girl was falsely accused them with the evidence was untold evidence. So just so, because some people are still watching this thinking it's true. For example, when she went to Blackpool, she said she was yeah. trafficked. Like, I'll let you explain. Which yeah, this, yeah. Is, this has all come out in court. It's, it's ridiculous. She goes, she travelled to Blackpool under my orders. Uh, she was trafficked and groomed there. And yeah, she got a train that she booked on her own phone. The best thing is, she, she had two phones. One was from Women's Community Matters. The, <clears throat> this is a charity now that her nan's a trustee of. And it's, it's a safe phone. So every phone call you make and every, every message you send is manuscripted. So it's all getting logged somewhere. So she, she's now sending messages from this phone to her normal phone, pretending it's me, telling her, go there, do this. So she books herself in Savoy, on the booking.com, that's the IP address of the VPN is linked to her mum's address. Gets to the booking.com, goes to her, walks around, has, an, has a new nauseous registration of cars, the Seat Ibiza, that the, the court they told us. She basically sees the car and she's seen, stop looking at the Seat Ibiza, black one, jots down the number plate, carries on walking. Goes and buys Bombay bad boys, pot noodles. This is now offensive to me. You go go and get Bombay <laughs> fucking bad boys. <laughs> like, you just don't do that. <laughs> so, so then he goes back to the hotel and watches I play on YouTube all night. And then gets back on the train, gets back to Barrow, and tells her mum, comes to, and ends up saying that she's been trafficked and raped. 
Something's going on there. Extreme, something's going know, on. It's not, right, it's not that it's hard to know. Who's funding that as well? A travel cost what? and all the other shit. Well, when was community you matters. Was you yeah, see, see I, I started getting down this rabbit hole thinking this is all a setup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is all a setup. Could there been competition with people you work with? I, I think it is. I think it originally Could started. This girl been like just being manipulated I, and just I, a boy I getting yeah, used. Yeah, yeah. I, personally I, got, I went down the I went down the other one where I started suspecting that this is a setup and a honey and a honey trap. They don't care about him getting done or they don't care about the accusations. But this will damage any future cases. Yeah. So that was my concern when I got there. I yeah. thought, well, hold on, if she if she is lied about this and she's lying about this, how are any other girls gonna think they can come forward? Yeah. Because everyone's gonna say, I like Barrow. Yeah, like Barrow. Yeah, that's what's going to come from this, which was my concern. My concern is girls aren't going to feel like they can come forward and talk now. Yeah, yeah. they're going to be presumed that they're lying. Yeah, uh, and they, and these cases are genuine in in the majorities of the cities. These when when it's gone on again with multiple other victims, but as I said, I couldn't find any other victims in, in Barrow, and I spent time there and spoke to everyone and was questioning everyone. And the the lies. Yeah, so Jordan Trengrove, she falsely accused him of rape, sets him up, creates evidence. He's, when they find out it's all fake, they come and bring him a court. He gets discharged from the court, and that's when they arrest her. So I went to the demonstration that was going on, and so that's the first the first demonstration. The first demonstration. First demonstration. Yeah. She was getting to jail. Uh, no, she no, we jail? had no. I, I didn't even know she was getting done for perverting the course of justice. Did you know this? I knew. Yeah, I knew, and I, and I didn't know Mo. So I knew all these other names. Yeah. But I didn't know about Mo till like, till like after when I come to your house that day. I found yeah, out. yeah, yeah. I think a week or so you, you were looking yeah, into. Yeah, I, I got I got the files like that given to me. When did she get charged with that? Um, ages before, wasn't it? And I see what I think. That's when I looked at. It, I thought you falsely accused three men of rape. Yeah. Now you're getting done for it. So what fits? The day before, like you know, this charge is coming. She knows what she's done. It was Muslims, and they trafficked me. That's what I thought. Well, mm, that's clever, because now you've got the public support. Yeah, whereas you, you where and that and that's the reason why you've said these men raped you. That's why I thought she. That's why I was trying to. Many times I was going down different paths, thinking, "What's she doing? What is this? Has this gone on? Why has she done that?" But then my main, my main concern was this is going to discredit many victims. This is going to going to be a absolute catastrophe for victims of sexual exploitation in towns and cities that have happened in control of Muslim gangs. Yeah, that's my thing. I thought this is terrible. Yeah, that's terrible. Their lives fucked off it. And um, and I don't think that I don't think any media who could have come out there were no restrictions they could have come out and made it very clear to people what had gone on previously to this the dad the mum knew what had gone on a lot of people in that town knew what had gone on but no one mentioned it so the the way it looked no one knew she'd falsely accused other men no one knew everyone thought when they were reading false accusations she's in prison for false accusations they all think it's false accusations against um, yeah. Mo Rami Muslim man Muslim man, man Muslim yeah. business Muslim yeah. business so that's the way it was portrayed to the whole British public and, and well, not the British public the world's public the world, the world, public. The world. Rwanda, it, Rwanda they went to Rwanda they did on YouTube <laughs> I can't believe it somebody <laughs> sent me a link and there's like four <laughs> Rwanda guys and they're doing the just as we're doing the <laughs> <don't laughs> dance man we're <laughs> doing the walk and I'm like you are I just looked at yeah. Nicholas and love so what can you do? I wonder. Mm -hmm. Right, it's say. ridiculous. The life spreads around the world. How Which difficult is it going to be now, though, to, yeah. uh, Tommy, for uh, exposing grooming gangs and you always been at the forefront? Like, how does that then change your motives to then your journalism it, kind it, it of thing? It doesn't change mine. I just hope it doesn't. And what, it can affect it because people will then use this card that... Yeah, they, they, it's fake. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, it definitely uh, it's opened the door to that now. Well, yeah, it has uh, yeah, opened, definitely. It's 100%. opened the door to it, but what it's also done is given a, or has the opportunity to give a voice to men, Muslim or non-Muslim, who have been yes. in this position, who are up and down the country, lots of men are in this position. Yeah. yeah. Lots of men have lost their livelihoods, their jobs, their reputations, their careers, everything through false accusations. Yeah. It's a very complex issue because you've got women who are victims, but then you've also got some twisted women who are making things up. Yeah. And by the there has to be some sort of protection given where men are not named until they're until after their verdict yeah. because you because mud sticks mud stuck against mo mud I, I said to jordan so jordan so jordan's been cleared when i go to jordan's house he's been cleared he hasn't done anything everyone's still calling him a pedo i went to the demonstration two thousand people and i said and i asked all them all um ellie's friends who's jordan trengrove and they said oh he raped ellie i said he raped ellie did he i said 
Okay, if he raped Ellie, how come he hasn't been prosecuted? Well, his mum threatened Ellie at the train station. This whole elaborate lie that Ellie's told him on, yeah? And, and then, so she didn't turn up at court and that's why he got off. And I'm sitting there and I think, no, I've read everything. He didn't get off because there was no case brought because she falsified evidence. And then even now people are using, this is when I can see how the power of this, the power of the media, because I could have easily made it look a certain way. So if I went there with my narrative, which is what the mainstream journalists do all the time, yeah? They've got their story before they get somewhere. And they make it fit. Fit. Yeah. I've watched them do it. Yeah. yeah. I've watched them do it against me. I've watched them do yeah. it against lots of people. And that is dangerous. And you can see, and I see in this case how how easy that is. Yeah. How easy to take a couple of statements from there, a couple of lines from there, a couple of lines from there, and think, yeah, there you go. Boom. 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 There's all the, and people are doing it now. And I mean, that's how that's how they it stitched me up. I watched a video yesterday. All the build up of it. Yeah. That's how they were doing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dirty in the character, first of all. Yeah. Filthying up the character with accusations, accusations, which are all hearsay. Yeah. There's lots of accusations, but the problem is, and, and I, w I watched this video yesterday, you sent me as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, this geezer knows nothing about this case at all. Hasn't researched any of the statements, doesn't know the actual lies this girl's told, hasn't met anyone in it, and here he is saying it's all bullshit and that they're guilty. Yeah. And and that's still, so still now, people will be calling him a pedophile. Still now, people will be saying he's got off. Still now. Yeah, yeah so, so you've covered it up. It's been a it's been a mass cover up. That's why I, I know that people I know that people will trust in what I'm saying in the investigation. And I've said from the start, I've said from the minute, nothing this girl says can destroy another man's life. Yeah, that doesn't mean she's not been a victim somewhere along the line to somebody. Yeah, because she's certainly messed up. She passed tests. She's not she's not mentally unwell. Yeah? So she's, she's had three psychiatric she's reports. Three psychiatric reports. And now now the defence have asked for well, an independent one. But which I'm sure the prosecution will cross uh, cross, uh, cross examine cross examine it, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, even in the in the when they when she was questioned about having a hammer, and she goes, "Oh, beating yourself up." And she in her statement is, "I'm not psychotic. I won't beat myself up with a hammer." Didn't she court. send a message to her mum? Didn't, didn't she send a message? That, that was when yeah, I was saying that before when she got her mother got arrested in mid trial. Yeah, and she had sent a letter. They found a letter, and this was brought up in court. That saying uh, she basically wrote a letter from prison to her sister, saying, "Take the hammer. It's in such a such a place. Give it to mum. Mum knows what to do with it. It needs to get to my solicitor." So then now there's these two hammers. One hammer was found, then they bought another one to kind of say, "No, this is the hammer she's got." So again, that's perverting the course of justice. Perverting the course of justice. Perjury. Has the mum been charged? No, no. mum was. This is the funny part, isn't it? The so mum's been arrested, mm -hmm. right? And she said, uh, she, oh, God, no, 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 don't, don't, no, I can't say that. She was, she said, because she sent an email to somebody. And so, it's mum's been uh, picked up. Mid trial, she was, she was at seven, uh, eight, eight point seven perverting course of justice charges. She goes guilty on one. Mum's released. So there's a plea deal. So mum's been released. Then she pleaded guilty on one. So now it drops to six. Instead, it went up to eight. So she's got go on a guilty of one and eight of the cause of char uh, charges, justice uh, charges going on. So when she got uh, when it got uh, when she got the verdict, she got on nine, nine charges, nine accounts. So she, see when she got a guilty, like, what was going through your mind then? After three years of torture, kind of coming to her head. Like, yeah, it was, was that a relief, or were you kind of tired? It, it, it was. It was a relief that to me was going up because yeah. <sighs> They'll bloody tell you he he gets all of it now because he talks to miss his kids and everything. They tell him, you know, I it consumed my life. You know, imagine a man for three years sits in his living room till six o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock till they get up, and then I go to bed because I'm watching that uh, thing. I'm, I'm call it paranoid, to call it, but I'm, I'm not. And then I'm, I'm watching everything on social media. I'm every social media I've got from the laptops there. So there a fucking. A wind blow a piece of can, a, 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 a can of pass me through the door, and I'd be downstairs with a bloody hammer right. or, 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 or a pipe or something. Just you know, somebody's in the shop or somebody's in my house. It, 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 it's not right. It's not. It's not, it's not it's a nice way to live in. Must be yeah, traumatic. because you it's could have got remanded. You could have lost your son, the and then you get away are. with it. Like that's yeah. really, like your, your life's not ruined. Like because she's been found guilty, like, it does take time. But these podcasts are good for that. Like, yeah, I know you're a Muslim man as well. That. Like, We'll touch on the religion side of things. Like, what has been a Muslim to you? You know what? When they arrested me and I got banged up, and uh, they're the, probably the, the CCTV there, the uh, first thing I did was ask for the cords of practice, got pen and paper, jotted a few things down. I thought to myself, you know, I've, I've been in and out a few times in the cop shop and stuff. I know the thing. I thought, this one, this is a big one. This, I've never, you know, this, I don't know. I got, got did my ablution. 
they, they happened to sell the other night. Oh, say, Kibla, uh, that way. So I just got that blue mat, the, the plastic thing. I faced that way. I didn't make two nuffle, they call it. And to me, that's just an extra prayer you do. And I said, God, I know I've done that, 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 that. Right. Oh, I said, yeah, no. <laughs> Please forgive me uh, well, on that, but I haven't done this, 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 what they're saying. I've not done this. So uh, I've got faith, faith is, it's blind. I believe in God. I, I love, I, I, I don't push on anybody. I, it's my, my belief. You know, I'm, I'm a Western man as well, living in the Western society. So I've got my balance of my religion and my, my culture. And my, my, my culture, I've got my parents' culture, I've got the, the tradition, I've got values, I've got morals, and I've got my religion. And I, I, I think if you, you know, if you put it all together, it's a very good concoction. But it's, it's how you misinterpret it. It's how you interpret it, interpret it. If I want to misinterpret it, you know, I don't agree with the radicalisms. I don't agree with any, anything that's radical. Or, you know, the bombings and the killings. No, no, that's totally wrong. That is Islam does not say that and you know that as well something it does at times mate it, it, it does. disagree <laughs> now it <We're> worked <laughs> let's do another one Joe, well, Joe when I went through I went, when I started looking at him I went through all of his Facebook and I went back years yeah and I found he was very pro he had Winston Churchill quotes he was celebrating when it was in Georgia Day any event he sort of like he was pro yeah which he was very patriotic he come across as very patriotic and then I come across um, and he stand there with, with this it was hilarious for me because I'm looking for him this is years before and his oh, name, everyone knows him as Rami. He's wearing mayor chains. When I'm standing as an MEP, he's got his mayor chains on and he's called himself Rami Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. This is years book. before. He's mugging me off. <laughs> mugging me off uh -huh. years before. I'm looking through thinking, you cheeky fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this cheeky fucker? <laughs> uh -huh. he's, he's uh -huh. I, I, I actually changed my name. That was on the you changed your name on Facebook. I changed book as well for about six months. I kept it as Rami, Rami Robinson. Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> so I, he's on a wind up. Yeah? So he's, um, but that's his character, as you can yeah. see. Buff being with Rami, like, how has it changed anything with you? Like, has it changed certain people, certain beliefs? Like, because obviously, look, he's a good guy. He's made his mistakes. He's fucked up. He admits that, like, as all. People, but people always presume that I judge all Muslims as one big group. Yeah. Yeah. I talk about Islam. I separate the idea ideology from the people. As I've and people, right. were, many of the times I've met some of my best mates are Muslim. Lots of the people I love growing up are Muslim. Yeah. So, but people have this opinion that I just automatically hate Muslims. Yeah. Because of the English Defence League, because of my stance on, on, on the religion, because of these things. So meeting Mo is just, it, it confirmed that, it confirmed how important it is that accusations are not made against people without every bit of evidence. Which everyone does, I think. Everyone would have done over the years. But, and, I, and also, I guess, it also confirmed that. And it's been diff a difficult one because you've got these groups in all these towns. There are victims in all these towns. And my, first of all, a concern has been with these girls, yeah, and what's happening to them. And then I've seen, I've, I have looked at the other side of it because there's been quite a few men found not guilty in these trials as well, yeah, in these grooming trials. So there's been men discharged, but lots of people would still presume their guilt, I guess. Yeah. But, they're, but they've been found not guilty in a court of law, mm -hmm. yeah. So, but some people, including myself, probably would still think, I think, I think you've done it, yeah, but without knowing every single detail of evidence because we haven't gone for every detail of evidence, we've just read the headline like most people do. So yeah, it's been a, it, the whole thing was all I knew. I, he's a character. He's a lovely man. He's got a lovely family. Um, right's right and truth's truth, yeah. and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I, I, as I said, I went there with a list of men's names to find dirt on them and dig on them. Yeah, okay. but for, for sexual for, for sexual exploitation, for, yeah, for, 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 for these, yeah, for you these, went to expose them. I went. To, yeah. I went to expose yeah. them. How was how much was your religion used on this case? No, I won't say much either. It was, it was in the sense of not me personally, as an, but as a general, you mean, as a general, yeah, 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 oh God, yeah, the Muslim, the Muslim grooming gang. See, that's the thing, isn't it? That, that gives it, that give it traction. That you put, there's loads of grooming gangs. There's, there's African grooming gangs, there's white grooming gangs. There's, you know, they're all over. They, they, I do believe now, being put into this, before I was the guy that, you know, with something like this, it, it repulsed me. I've got a daughter at the age of 22. I've got 18 nieces. You know, <laughs> it's... How many? 18. <laughs> See what I'm on about? <laughs> Demographics. <laughs> Yeah. I've got one. <laughs> We're breeding like rabbits. 
It's a takeover. Uh, like, like, do you know, double numbers. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what the dangerous thing is? And this is the uh, government's fault oh, and it's the police's fault. Because of their inability and their unwillingness to deal with real crimes that have been happening for decades, yeah? And, they're, they're, and what has been a cover-up, that's why everyone believed this is a cover-up. Cover up, yeah. That's why everyone didn't trust the police. If you'd have been truthful in your job for the last 30 years in Rotherham, in Telford, in all these towns and cities, and you just have dealt with criminals as criminals when they're doing these crimes and not covered them up for sake of diversity and not hid these crimes, you, we live in a dangerous time now where no one believes the media, no one believes them on the... On the, I'll say it begins with co and ends in D, and you stick it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we, we, we had to bleep. You had to I know, because you'll just get, because they'll, get, they'll delete it. That was an excuse to take it down. But that's an insanity times yeah. we live in, yeah? But no one trusts anything, which is dangerous times, because innocent people's lives are being destroyed, probably left, right, and center across the country, because of everyone's suspicion of what's true, because no one knows what's true anymore. They've, they've mud it, dirtied the line so much that you listen to the media, you see the news, and I think you're lying. So when you see this, and, and if it suits people's narrative of what they believe then it fits it and, and yeah that's it it's narrative narrative unfortunately for this it fitted it when did you start believing in tommy and trust them because you must have been skeptical especially the work that you've done you must have been thinking, and like i said fucking, i was one of his fucking this is a hard job. <laughs> job. <laughs> yeah i was one of you know and, uh, it's like with lads I were telling him last night and, and I used to be like Tommy Robinson is this this and I'm telling my kids I've never met him because just seen on social media and stuff I was just saving me I used I, to I shot some I, three four years ago no. mate <laughs> got my podcast more than fucking anybody <laughs> now messaging every day fucking back them on to yeah, yeah. I don't know maybe he's just fucking brainwashed it. <laughs> yeah that was you got media didn't it yeah. media there yeah, yeah. And, but you know what it was he, when he contacted me come home we sat down it's like me saying I even had to shave my head off I could look like a thug, thug meeting Tommy Robinson I'd be, yeah. mm. I had to go shave my head I even got a, a hoodie that day I don't, I don't wear hoodies this is, me, this is my normal dress sense I had to go to meeting Tommy I had got my hair shaved got a hoodie I thought I love the part mm. <laughs> what was in that <laughs> I was mental but you know what it's what you just said earlier and when he sat in that my, my, my living room and he looked over at my kids and everything, and he just me because you were with the horses, and when you by the time you come back, and just me and my boys there, they're downstairs. He walks in, and we've had that bloody thing at the door. Shut me hand, shut the kids' hands, and he just looked at him, walked up. First, he complimented. He goes, "Nice house, man. Like it." Very nice. I'm actually yeah. your interior designer. I'm yeah. like, why now? <laughs> and he just stood and looked at my boys. He didn't speak to me. He just stood and looked at my lads. And this is where I can't, can't, I judge from a man's character. Mm -hmm. When he looked at me, lads, I thought, is he wearing your mop? <laughs> is he going to be a scuffle in <laughs> oh, 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 no, he just looked and he says, I want to sit down, sits down. He goes, how's it affected them? That's his first, his opening line in my front room. I think it was something along the line. How, how, how they're doing. Why? Why? Because I, I just, because I thought, because I know how it affects mine. So I know how, when people lie in about me, yeah. I think yeah, that's affecting my kids. When the media print a story that's bullshit, it's affecting my kids. So I've already know that there's certainly big discrepancies and possibilities that this is a lie. And then you've got families, who, and then I look and think, how do you do it as a kid? I probably still don't even know if they know how they've, how they've dealt with it or really took in the adverse effect of it. Because that's one the worst thing you could ever be called. And every young boy looks up to their dad. So to, to him, yeah. that's his hero. Yeah, mm -hmm. no matter what, no matter even if you do wrong, you're still you're, you're, you're your son's hero. hero. So your hero is now being called a nonce by the whole town. Is that still something you struggle with? To be honest with you, I I, I do. I, I just it's I'm I'm getting back out there. I was a very sociable person, man. I, I, the thing that the whole thing is because I was in hospitality. I had restaurants. I had wine bars. I had nightclubs in Barrow, you know, in the, in the town centre, and I was always out. I was, you know, we should go out three, four times a time. And then obviously you've self-imprisoned ourselves. And now getting out of that, for me, in Barrow, I find it difficult. I do find it difficult. Even though I've got good staunch mates there as well, English lads. And you know what? They're, they're exactly going through the same thing. Ross, Rick Wilson, everything. You know, one of them's even sons. Even one of their lads, Rick Wilson's Frankie, wasn't it? A mate of mine, right? And he stood up for me and he knew what was happening with me. And... At the age of 13, that kid is being called, oh, you, you, you packy lovers. That's in, in, in school, man. It'd be, dad, you know, oh, your dad supports paedophiles, packy paedophiles. Now, Frankie, that lad was going through that, and then Rick contacted me one day, and he goes, I'm me. I'm, 
he stands he stands up for the right things and he goes I, it's pissed me off but you know my kid's getting bullied now but I just want you to know if I can't I'm not going to say it but I'm always on your sport I'm here for you but I'm not I'm not going to be on the social media thing because he's getting attacked I thought which is fair enough I understand that but Rick thank you very much you've done that but how shit's that though man that these people were now sending their kids so anybody that spoke up to me to pick on their kids and then two of the lads and the other one they've they've got they've not they were very sociable did loads of events and stuff and they feel like disconnected with Barrow now and it's it's not nice is it it's the whole thing of it and everyone can say now oh you know uh, oh, we're sorry or you, you, you know now all the friend requests are coming back and you know I had like two and a half thousand uh, three thousand people on my Facebook it's not as, not as big as him like <laughs> I'm banned <laughs> You're banned. I ain't got any <laughs> but it was then you're just watching everybody coming declining 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 you're thinking hang on you're going to Tesco it's used to wind it up when I used to go to go and, go, go and get a couple of things if I'm going to the big Tesco I used to wind it up because I won't be back for about an hour I, I'm, every aisle I'll stop and talk to somebody and I'm going in and nobody's looking at every nobody's just looking at me. And I'm just thinking, I thought, this is Nick, this isn't right. What the hell's happening here? You know, the could be even the people that you're looking at, you, I'm letting on, they have an eye contact like, and they're just you're thinking, Oh, and they but are that, believing. But it is big accusations, so people yeah. are probably just protecting themselves. So, but yeah. if you've got somebody's back, man, you don't turn on them. Turn them. Like I say, if you they get a guilt and then you go, Do you know what I fucked up, I'm sorry, but when it's those accusations, man, that... Like, Everyone's doing it now, isn't it? Yeah. Everyone's doing it now over a well, we've Andrew, Andrew Tate, we've been at the forefront, we've kind of had his back and... People are hammering me. Yeah. Even my own sports are hammering me and I'm saying, especially with this case, yeah. yeah. you cannot judge what's gone on until you see every bit of evidence. Evidence. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but so far, That's everything right. don't add up with this case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you want me to what? And I, I said to my own supporters in the comments, I lost so many, we had monthly subscribers, they all cancelled, yeah? And, and I said, well, you want me to hang the man? Based on what? The media are telling you. You want me to hang someone based on what the media are telling you about sexual allegations? So it's not, it's not happening, man. It's not happening. No, not, not the proof's are not there. You yeah. can't do it until the proof's not there. Not, and and if the proof's there, then okay. But uh, it's yeah. not. But yeah. like I said, I spoke to his lawyer then as well a couple of days ago, there's no evidence whatsoever. People have came forward and said, the girls who got uh, jailed that day, they were all partying in the house. There's videos of them part, all partying in the house. Yeah, and the police have took the CCTV for the last yeah, nine months and won't give it back. Yeah, so and it's Romanian if, police. Yeah, it looks as if they're keeping uh, them to try and find something. They're trying to get something to stick. They're trying because to Because if, the if they let him out without any chances, he's, he's going to become so big. He's going to be ten times bigger than what bigger, he is. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. How but is he'll it? struggle. Will he really, really struggle with his character? But these are the worst kind of accusations. And again, it's like. Again, I just think that I try, when I spoke to yourself, I spoke to Jordan, I said, how do you stop this happening to another man? How do you stop it happening to another man? Because it doesn't matter if you've been found not guilty, mud sticks. Now, you, hopefully most cases have gone that big that everyone gets to see the evidence that's gone on and get to see that this was a lie. But in other towns and cities, when a man's accused of rape, it doesn't matter if he gets off. He's still viewed as rapist. rapist. People are saying, well, yeah, okay. They, they still believe it. So there has to be some sort of, something has to be put in to protect men from having to go through what any of these families have had to go through. Yeah. What was your friend saying when you started teaming up with Tommy? Uh, oh, there's a, there's, it's a mix. It's a mix. My, my, my majority of my real friends, uh, close friends, and then associates, they like me, mentally-wise. They, they, we have the similar kind of uh, intelligence. And, and they were like, open view, go with an open, open thingy, and have a sit down and discuss. And, you know, you, you, you're both sensible. You'll know. They were always, always like, you'll know. Oh, for some of my mates, I actually love him. Well, you know, me elder, but some of the Billy and all that, but you know, they like they love him. They've always loved him. And we'd be like, you know, we're having arguments with my own. It's Tommy Robinson. He's done this. He's done that. What are you gonna do? And he was like, no, you dickhead. You don't know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, I've got some support. Like, I look at the comments. And it's ninety-five percent love from yeah. every background, every religion. Like, it's yeah, not yeah. a case of well, the first podcast we done three years ago. It was kind of. I've seen the people who were supporting you. Now it's changed, man. Like, it genuinely has. Like, I think people question everything now since COVID. Can't say the word. Yeah, since yeah. that. Since that, since Ukraine, since yeah. all the... I think, like, even I said myself, I'll sit and look at the world differently now. I just think you're lying to us about everything. So what changes then for you going forward for the future with everything that you've done in the past? For me, I just continue my journalism. People trust what I say more than any other journalist in this country, I believe. I believe that the public trusts in what I'm saying. So if I yeah. put something together and say, this is how, this is what I found, then people trust it. I've got two, two episodes to finish. One, I'm going to absolutely ruin the council in Telford, exposed them so bad with what I've got. Um, 
which shows why it was allowed to happen in Telford. When you see at the top, there's allegations going all the way to the top. But I just want to continue my work and my journalism. Mm -hmm. So somebody who's came at the forefront and stood by your side when everybody will turn their back that. When you see, see Tommy getting attacked, like, how do you feel? Oh, well, I now, when the, the people call him racist, I stand up for that. I, I'll challenge that. I, I question it. I question it. I, I, anybody that I know, and I've said, like I've said to him, I will stand up anywhere and say, Tommy's not racist. Don't say that. It's not, it's not true. And he's got his views on the Islam thing. That's, is, that's, that's we're still into talking negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Am I, to, am I persuade him to change certain views? Certain views? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you in a post before that happens. <laughs> Uh, but happens a few. I'm, if I'm, 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 I'm about to, to go, it, I'm back up with yeah. Andrew Tate. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I know, I'm waiting for that. That's what I was lining up. Me and Andrew Tate. Uh, the, uh, the clash. But no, you know what? That's his. That's his thing. He, he, I don't think he's. It's, if you understand what he goes against it when he talks about Islam and Muslims, he goes about the radicals. He ain't talking about a Muslim like me. He ain't talking about a Muslim like my son. He ain't talking about us normal, real Muslims. He's talking about the radical Muslims, and that I would stand with him if he was doing going there. You know, as long as he doesn't go to the degree of burning your Quran or anything, then, you know what I mean, that's, it's wrong. You know what I mean, that. But it's just having respect. And I think it's like I watched his video the other day, and I think Tommy's maturing himself with his way he used to handle his uh, campaigns and go and deal with them. And that's him now going in. He's, he's becoming more professional. Yeah, I, I used to deal with things through anger, Tommy, if I'm yeah. honest. Like, yeah, I man. watched you down at the, in London at the weekend and... You are more professional. You are more. Your energy has changed. You've not got the. It's like a. You could tell with your presence, you were there to cause trouble. No matter what way you might have looked at it then, but then your Muslim men are actually speaking to you now. Do you know when I went to, to, when I went to Barrow? There's only 170. I'll check the consensus in 2011. There's 172 Muslims in Barrow. I believe now 400. About 400 now. Every family I approached, let me in the house and spoke to me. It was very nice. One family actually come and give me information on certain men that they allege are committing these sorts of crimes. There wasn't anyone that wasn't willing to talk. When I went, I went to the, the Quran burning on Saturday. Um, so the Quran burning has been in Sweden and in Denmark, and there was a demonstration outside the Swedish embassy. And I went, and it was a Kurdish Iraqi group who were very different to the the, the light has always been given to. Anjum Chowdhury's group in these demonstrations, which is what I expected to see. And when I turned up, it was lots of smiling Muslim faces who were shaking my hand, saying, hello, Tommy, how are you? And, uh, and, and wanting to talk. And then, um, yeah, I had conversations with plenty of them there. But I, I disagreed with plenty of them on, on lots of things. And what I said is, because they burnt the Swedish flag. I said, do you not realise, like, for me, like, I'm not saying stand here and burn a Quran. I don't think there should be laws that prevent people from doing it. Yeah, I don't think it's that wise of an idea. But if someone does, does do it, I don't think they should be punished by the state for it. Yeah. So I said, you're angry because someone's burnt a Quran and you're angry with the whole of Sweden. Yeah? You've just set fire to a Swedish flag. It's got the cross in it. Yeah? You're going to upset a lot of people with that. It says it's the total same as you're upset about this. Yeah. You're going to upset a whole country now. Yeah? And it's people. Yeah? Because if that was my flag, I'd be, I'd be pissed off and stopping you doing that. Yeah? The same way you'd be wanting to stop me burning the Quran. I said, so what you're saying is, this is wrong. So then you've burnt the Swedish flag, the Danish flag. You've cheered all this stuff. I said, you've absolutely undone for me. I went to see the argument and I said, this is your right, lads. When I went there, I said, what's going on? We're angry. I said, okay. And I asked all of them, what do you think should happen to the protester? Yeah? And Jim Chowdhury would say he needs to be killed. And they said, nothing should happen, but we're, we're angry about what's going on. I said that, and that's your right, lads. Yeah? So there was a very, they were sound. Yeah, was, see, I, I find, I find it strange yeah, yeah. about Denmark because I lived in Denmark at mm. the age of 15 till about the age of 17, 18. I, was, I lived in Denmark on and off. I used to come back and forth, but my brothers were there. We had shops there. How many nieces you got in Denmark? I might have a cousin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but honestly, and I always thought that they would do it. I never. It's one dude. Never, it's one dude, yeah. It's one dude doing a stunt. It's yeah, one dude. one dude. Yeah, I suppose it is because that, that's what I'm saying. In Denmark, I would say they're really nice people. You know, there's no derogatory swear in Denmark. Even the, the, the worst thing the Danish would say to you as a foreigner is they, they don't farm arbeider. Right? That means you dumb foreigner. Right, right. That's that's the racist swear. If somebody said that, that that's the class of calling somebody a packy, monkey, whatever. That's you know it. what I mean? That's that's the equivalent to that. The dumb farm arbiter, and and you, you know, I think, and they, you know, you never worried. I, you, that growing up in the Bolton, Manchester, then you know, if there was like group of twenty lads, and you're on your own at night, you'll you'll take cross the road or something. 
there, you know, the lads would move out of the way for you. And it's and I just found it very strange that Denmark and Sweden is now and there's a big Muslim community. It, there. It's just one. It, so what's going on there? It's one dude pushing the boundaries on free speech. That's what he's challenging. Yeah, um, he's, 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 he's a far right yeah. activist, isn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I don't know him. No. <laughs> no, I don't know. Do you know him? Yeah. I don't know him. It's, it's my uncle. Check his WhatsApp. <laughs> Check his WhatsApp. Yeah, it's my uncle. You all right, mate? When, you, got... when you're next doing it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got... Well, from um, the Glasgow side, or the yeah. Scottish side, or the Irish side. Because <laughs> I've got many Muslim friends. I love them, my bitch. Yeah. I know how fucking crazy they are. They're just as mad as me. Like, mm. But can you see where what Tommy's trying to expose as well with the grooming gangs and the connections? Actions, yeah. Can you see that? Because a lot of people, it's good that these two are here as well to discuss that because a lot of people are just, ah, you're racist, you're this, you're... Like, can you see what he does as well as well, the right thing? No, yeah, he does, definitely. That, that, it takes, I said, you know what, it takes a certain man to do that work. And like I was saying earlier, you know what, I would watch or news and I find it disgusting. I did, you don't want to be linked or do it. And then having go, him going out and actually... Having to process all that stuff in your head is fucking crazy. Fried my head that last one. You know what I mean? I need to get just get these next two finished. It's it's it's, it's dark. It's a dark world there. And yeah. then me getting thrown into it. Then I'm I've been working with the I'm sure he, he won't mind Joseph Kuzak. Uh, we got really close with him. He's done the Charlene's Down documentary. He's a ghostwriter. He's done fourteen odd books, and he's spent a lot of time. And he, when the thick of all this, like when Tommy's come and gone, right at the beginning, right and He's, he was always with me and he, he, he advised me what to speak to if not to and he has always said he goes I think if you can relate to Tommy it's a good thing because he will take the trouble off you I always did and I've got to be honest with you the, when they was going on and I phoned after he phoned me put the phone down I had uh, DCI John Robinson amazing guy the guys that did this investigation Dougie Marsh Andrew Hill and Gary Humes right I I really, really am grateful to them, men. They are re they were very thorough. They were very good men. Any time they were there, on they, they pick up a phone call, man, the guy, was, they were there. They were they, really good. And that DCI, John Robinson, they were all scared that, like everybody, like I was, you know, did, what's Tommy's agenda? What's Tommy going to do? Which is why they nicked me. Right. Why they give me conditions. It's like, I think they think they believe the hype. Yeah. And you know what? And I, I even said to John Robinson that day on the phone driving up from Bolton, I said, look, I think I'm going to meet him. And he goes, but you think so? You can handle it. You don't feel pressured or don't feel thingy or anything. I said, no, I, he hasn't pressured me. I don't feel anything. I said, we've had a little crack on the phone. He's been outside the house. And I want to see him. I want to see him because I know I'm innocent. Why shouldn't I see him? Why shouldn't I see him? I'm innocent. You, you, you're not mainstream media is not putting it out there, but it, it, there's been years of history going on. If you look at the Evening Mill, Pedo slurs, schools have named my businesses. I've, you know, there's loads of stuff going on. Borough Police didn't protect me. Borough Council didn't protect me. So you know what? If Tommy Robinson's coming to me home and he's and he's saying to me, I'm going to here to look into the case and get to the bottom of the truth. More than welcome, mate. It's hundred percent easy. Well, thank you. Somebody that wants to get to the bottom of it. Ah, uh, if he wants to spin it, then it's a different story, isn't it? But I recorded him. We came to my house. We recorded. You recorded. I record, got cameras, and the police asked for it. I didn't give it to anybody. I said, "Why should I?" That's between me. And, that's between me and Tommy. And that's just for my safety, in case you know, because I'm paranoid at the time as well, thinking, "Is he going to spin it?" Like yeah, he said, you could so easy could have done it. Especially with it. the following Tommy's yeah. got man. He could, what he says. People follow, man. follow, and yeah. yeah, and it was, it was, it, it, and it was, it was the height of things. Then when it, it was like two thousand, like you can tell me there, two thousand people turned up, cars, cars, you know, it, it's, place. and then when he got arrested, and then they were circling me home, circling cars, beeping and circling me home. I'm getting shot, a shout, rapist. I'm, I'm stood next to him, walked out, and I said to him, um, you're all right, so I'm, what, I'm going to smuggle him out the back. No, my, my police are outside, and he's like, I'll get you out the back, get in the boot. Because <laughs> the ice cream man's like, you can jump in straight through the hatch. I thought, off we go. <laughs> See, your religion as well, more like, what's, what's the positives from it? Because I know there's negatives and positives in every religion. There's some dark, satanic shit in every, um, in every religion, but yeah. I know people would die for the profit. Yeah. Like, but what's the positives? In, because I've seen Andrew Tate, with the Quran, like yourself, like what was the benefits and the positives with the one word? Or what did I used to say? My love, sabr. Yeah. The Arabic word. What sabr. does that mean? Sabr means patience. Mm -hmm. This is my test. This is our test as a family, and we've been put into the worst of it. Allah's put me in it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be patient. Let everything take its course. We know we're innocent. We know we've not done anything. 
We know we've got Tommy on board. Tommy's been, he's looked at it. Tommy's adds, and man to man, he said it straight to me. He, he had done his little bit of research he had done, then he went and looked further in as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Even yeah. though he was he was convinced, he still wasn't convinced. <laughs> I've got to be. Right. And he was telling me the other day, this. he goes, you know, bro, but I, 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 I even don't do it, but I still carried on. <laughs> <laughs> That's one, Tommy. Thanks for that. Can you, obviously, I know you wrote the book, Tommy, about the Quran, but can, do you see good things in it as well that people can actually, because I've got friends who've went to Christ I've been in the, the meetings it's, it's and, the, and they've people. changed their life but can you see that some people actually believe that it is a good thing and it actually makes them a, a I, better person I believe some people if you treat it like a buffet and you take these parts and leave these parts there's some great parts in it Yeah. if you if you want to take it gives people I've seen it in jail it gives people a sense of identity a strong identity it gives them a sense of belonging a sense of brotherhood a sense of community which at times we could feel jealous of, of, of the community they have yeah. because our community is broken it's a mess yeah Families are broken. Um, that's not happening in the Muslim community. Um, old age pensioners getting put in care homes. It's not happening in the Muslim community. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of goods that you can look and think that's good. But there's also, for me, a, a, a lot of negatives. Yeah. But these people who just take these bits can go and live a great life and live a very positive life because they're not following every word as a literal interpretation to follow. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a, there, there's a lot that, that Islam is filling a void in the UK. It's why you're seeing large numbers of conversions. It's why you're seeing people adapt to it. It's why you're seeing people. It's very strong. It's a fucking strong ideology in the sense of it will not budge. It's like your laws will budge before Islam budges. Your <laughs> Everything will budge before the principles. Uh, uh, that's why they said Muhammad, mounted, mounted yeah, Muhammad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's on top of the mountain, wasn't he? <laughs> but, it's like, but it's like, so on this LGBTQ+, I've said this many times recently, Islam's not going to budge, man. The Muslim community ain't going to budge. You no. see your little, um, your little uh, mafia, the LGBTQ plus mafia, and your pushing of the sexual agenda on children. Sam Smith and all this nonsense in his latest video. Oh, yeah, that's bad. bad. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Like, 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 that's do you think? Yeah. Do you think? Do you think, yeah, do you think there's going to be a room full of Muslim children being read nursery rhymes by a drag queen? Well, there ain't. Yeah. But currently, every library across this country is getting booked out as they do this tour of men dressed as women reading nursery rhymes to kids. Like, leave the children, children alone. Out of it. Leave them alone. Yeah? Leave them alone. And, and so there's issues like that. And I see a lot of men are looking for something strong. A lot of men are looking for something that like, is going to rebel this. Yeah? Because this is part of what I'd say is the conspiracy of the New World Order. It is the New World Order, yeah? It's weak men, feminized men. It's the breakdown of the family, purposely orchestrated in the black community and every community. Yeah, they don't want you having a strong dad figure. Yeah, they don't want a father figure. They want the state control. State will bring up your children. You know, they're now bringing in the law that you will not be able to take your child out as a sexual education. Part of the sexual education from the age of six or seven, they were introducing self self love, teaching children about masturbation. That's sick. It's like leave the children alone, you sick fuckers. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if you look at how whether it be Pi with the Labour Party, you look at a lot of these top politicians and and the lobbyist groups that they've been involved with over the years. It's all about lowering the age of consent. It's all about just breaking down the barriers of men and women, boys and girls, what is a boy, what is a girl. It's all this confusion of the next generation. I just read today, I don't know, I need to check the statistic, but 300,000 children now in, in America are trans. Like you are messing, even my well, children. What age? My children, just in my children's school, yeah? Well, in my children's school, there's, there's quite a lot, yeah? In, in all the schools now, like you are confusing these kids and then you're giving them drugs, you're giving them hormonal drugs, drugs yeah. yeah, as children. And, and then you're taking away the father and the parent's right to prevent this to happen. They want to bring your kids up, basically. And they want you at work every hour of the sun. They want you in debt every hour of the sun. You want everyone on antidepressants. They want you all fat. They want you all in a mess, yeah? Because they don't want a, a strong population that's there to resist what they want. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I said this many, I've said this many times, so many Muslims may be upset. I understand why Muslims get upset when I'm talking about Islam, yeah? And, and, and different to because it's part of our identity, yeah? Strong, it's part of my identity being from Luton. You want to slag Luton off, you, you upset me. Yeah, it's part of their identity is it be, it being it, it's being Muslim now. And, and so, when I'm they, they'd say attacking Islam, but when I'm when I'm bringing up negative flaws within Islam, they feel like I'm sort of attacking them, or they I can see why they see it, but I'm not. I said, I'm just talking about this, I'm separating you from it. Yeah, that, that's that's the passion of us. Yeah, that's the passion we have towards religion, and you're 100% there. Yeah. That's nobody at the time when you talk about Islam, nobody computes it. 
it's just stand up. Fucking it's just fun. stand up. Yeah, yeah. You know, give it two minutes, compute what he's saying, and then have the conversation. It isn't. And that's the love we have for the religion. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. That's, that's the, you know what I mean? Like you, and it's taught, it's taught within it to defend it. You, you, it, it the teachings of it is partly to defend if you attack the Prophet Muhammad, we're coming for you. What yeah. happens if you try and relieve the religion? Though is it not there? I, I, in, the, in certain countries, it is. Yes. So it is. It, it's yeah. So there's in six there's six hadiths, sahi, the six sahih hadiths, authentic hadiths in the Sunni. Al Sahih Bukhari. Bukhari Bukhari says kill him. Yeah. The, 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 um, Muslim says kill him. Um, four four, four, is... four out of the six make it very specific multiple times. If you leave Islam, you be killed. Which is why lots of the Islamic countries is punishable by death. Mm -hmm. Now, my thing is, like, you might stop the average Muslim in the UK. I bet if you ask Mo, if someone changes their mind and wants to leave Islam, he, he don't want to kill him. You know, I don't know. You no, want, I, no. no, I so, don't have a right to take no, anybody's life. No, that's it. So, so there's lots of, which then, there's lots of challenges, but I talk, I, I talk about them. Yeah, mm -hmm. I talk about them because as we have growing numbers, there's a culture shift and it's like a minority of extremists always rule. I think 10% of Germany was Nazis. Yeah, 10%. All right, look what they've done. Yeah, when you have a small very dedicated group who are active and committed is powerful yeah so i'm not That's saying power. i'm not saying the vast majority of muslims don't have to agree with it yeah all you need is a really fucking strong push 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 whether it be the taliban in in afghanistan where, whatever it is it's very committed they're more committed than anyone else so that's why i say it's dangerous which is when i talk about it i try and say like we've got in, to look at this in case some deflect the switch and says right we want to do this or that and then people would follow yeah when the numbers become when the num when the demographic big, changes that can be big, done. then what are we going to do that's what so that's what i talk about and, and it's just exploring can we talk about it mm -hmm. can we say okay so luton is now a minority luton is a majority muslim town yeah I've seen that change, okay? I've seen the change which I believe is problematic for freedom. I believe there's lots of issues that come with it. I believe there's lots of issues, whether it be to do with certain crimes, this, this, this. Things that, things that actually, if the government just done their job and the police done their job, we probably wouldn't feel half as worried, yeah? I haven't tackled grooming, haven't tackled FGM, been scared to deal with all these issues due to cultural sensitivities, rather than just enforcing the law that's there, yeah? There's so many problems. And, and then there's the political correctness problem where people end up self-censoring their views and scared to scared to air their views and then you have all these NGO organisations but then I also believe where I'm looking at it is that the Islamic community have been are being used as well by these globalists who want to cause breakdown of society I've played my part in that yeah when I look at it Black Lives Matter has been used as an organisation to cause further divide. So whilst they've got the Black Lives Matter divide going on, they've got the racist divide going on, they've got the Muslim community, they've got all these clashes going on where they're funding all of them to for all these clashes. You've got all these different <coughs> groups. Whilst they're doing that, these fuckers yeah, are just taking every bit of our freedom, bit by bit by bit, whether it be through terrorism legislation that affects all of us once they bring these laws in. Like the stop, as I said, these stop oil protesters now, they shut the bridges, they shut the motorways, they do all of this. They're funded by the globalists. So the people who are, who want all this are funding them, yeah. Then Rishi Sinax just passed new laws to deal with them, yeah. But it's not dealing with them; it's going to deal with all of us. They bring in more lockdowns not for lockdowns. they bring in the climate change lockdowns like they're doing now. These twenty minute zones, they start bringing all that in. Well, they've passed these new laws, whereas really these stop oil protesters were blocking roads, they were causing mayhem. That, that you already had the laws to deal with them. You didn't need new laws, but you stood the police down. You actually see them stand the police down. The police were giving them, feeding them fucking sandwiches and giving them bottles of water <laughs> while they're blocking roads That's... with an ambulance with people dying in the back. You're shutting down bridges, causing mayhem, yeah? But they were allowed to, and it was facilitated, it's all planned. So then they bring in these new laws and these new laws take part of our freedoms away. And when we try and protest what's coming next, and I know people, some people who haven't looked into this probably think he's mad, yeah? They're going to be doing these 20 minute zones that they're trialing now. You see, they're trialing Bath and they're trialing Oxford. Trust them to choose two middle class places. Yeah. You start trying to do that crap in your council estate, you're going to have a problem. But that's what they're bringing in these zones where you'll need, you'll need permits to leave the zones. And it's all going to be due to the carbon footprint to save the planet. planet. It's bullshit. Yeah. What makes a good Muslim man more? What makes a good Muslim man is a person that doesn't judge, right? Keeps. He, he, it's. It, it's about just doing what's right, being a good person. Like in English, they say it's nice to be nice. Manners cost nothing. Manners make it the man. Like it's just them the fundamentals of it, and that makes a good Muslim man. It's a very simple religion. You follow it to the simple basis of it, and it makes it, it makes life easy. It, it, well, you th like to think <laughs> <laughs> making that easy for you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> 
I, like I said, I, and that was my test. <laughs> I know, yeah. that, that was my test there, but you that's it. it. Yeah, I passed it. And I did. And they did, and it makes you stronger. And, it, you know, it's, it's Islam is now portrayed like it's a, such a big it's demonized it's you know we, we we go out we bomb we do this we do that not really no that, that that's they're the radicals they're the wrong ones they, 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 the majority of them are funded by the cia in america isis is gone we've got this uh, uh, taliban who, you know, uh, osama bin laden who, 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 why was he put in there why was he put in afghanistan but by, by the Americans. i think trump released the, the new leader of the taliban trump released just before he left and then they took over as the Taliban. Yeah, and they would, would look, they, they, they leave their weapons and everything and say, oh, sorry, we're going now. And you can, yeah, you have this. <laughs> I, I get, I mean, recently I've thought deeply about it. Is it like when the, Af the invasion of Afghanistan or the invasion of Iraq, the illegal, unlawful invasion of those countries, yeah. And then when they're blowing all these bombs, they're just saying it's against insurgents. If you come into my country, I'm an insurgent, mate. Yeah. You bring a military force into this country, I'm an insurgent. So these people who are in Afghanistan and Iraq, they're going to resist you. You're bringing an invading army in, yeah, to overthrow the, in each of these countries, to rob the countries, basically. And all of that. So when even, even the terrorists, like when I hear like their arguments and I, f I hear their arguments and it's disgusting what they've done and it's barbaric what they've done, they're right about the British government. They're right to be enemies with the British government for what they've done because the, currently the government are all of our enemies. They well, are government not... affairs, I can understand, but not the, can't, but not be the enemy of the government, the British population. No, yeah, the government. The, the, the government. You know, this is the way we think people differ. They're understanding the government strategic policies and people. Yeah, yeah. and you, you know that's what we've got to all get a balance of. It, it's find out who's causing the issues and who's not. And what we do is they they, they set the issues, they set everything up, and we we're just like sheep, aren't we? We're just following it. We're just following it because oh, it's on it's on news. Oh, it's on that. It, it should be. It's correct. BBC said. Yeah. <laughs> When's that get a what for sentencing? And do you think uh, she'll get prison it, time, or do you think it will just be community service? No, no, prison. She's already remanded. So do you think she'll get? Uh, three, but she years? got out. She got out, didn't she? Yes, because when she first when she first got arrested. And she was, I think it was for about eight months she was in originally, or six months. And then they couldn't keep her any longer due to tri the trial weren't going to take place. Because of COVID? Cause, yeah, that's the excuse. Was but what gets me is now, if you look at the Bradford grooming ring cases, took place in the COVID. And yeah. I've how, got lots of friends who have been uh, on remand the whole way through COVID. Uh, uh, how oh, much, how much changes. we're in contact with this girl, this Asian girl, because of all this, I've got, I'm, I'm honest to God, my life's kind of changing. I'm getting people reaching out to me. And I've been sharing some of these stories with uh, Tommy as well. And this woman reached out to me. Her husband was put in uh, Bradford grooming. And she's got paperwork. We need, and she goes, I want you to look at all this. I'm thinking, I'm no lawyer. I'm no brief. I just stood my ground and did what I did. But it's... And she's now comes and when she tells me everything about her husband getting sentenced and the way they put him into the Bradford ring and his... Yeah, he was getting done for... A little selling a bit of weed here and there. That's it. He, he was known for, and they basically picked him up, put him into this, uh, into this ring, and he's been sentenced to nineteen odd years. And she goes, "He isn't. He isn't that." He goes, "I know." And the girl that, she, and she's been talking to the girl that was saying that's been the the victim, and she's and she's actually said, "No, he hasn't done it." And she said to that to the police, "No, he hasn't done it." They said, "No, just sign here." Where do you go forward for the future, more before us? I, you know what? It's it's not something I ever thought I would do or be, but I just, it's now because of the passion. It's like when, when I did the restaurants, I, don't, I always did the best ones. Uh, I did the ice creaming, I did it the best, right? It's true. And I now, what's happened and what's, as a family, what we've gone through, what we've been through, and people coming to me, I think I can see me kind of being uh, in, a, in a place where I'm, I want to I make change, I want to make help. I don't want this to happen again. I don't want anybody to be wrongly accused, whether it's of rape, whether it's of drug dealing, whether it's of fraud, whether it's of money laundering, whether of anything. You cannot just throw somebody's life away and just, you know, the way they did. You know, come in and how many times I, I, I got searched, how many times I got stopped. You know, then I went to the whole ring. I got arrested again. After, I'm in the thick of all this. And then they come, like on force, there's about 15 officers come from the hall to arrest me. They got to Battle Police Station. But to obviously show them the warrants and everything and do the legal work and get a uniform with them to escort. They thought, you know, can't. They, then they, this is the uh, Inspector Paul something he was called, the guy that's the main investigator of the whole grooming scandal. And he looked at it and he goes, we had to stay the night. 
So that how much does it cost? It's costing more taxpayers' money. Like it's staying at night in a hotel while they restructured how they were going to come and raid, man. And two of them went to basically they went uh, half of them. He sent his half his force home. I'm not even I'm not even there for my own safety. Uh, you know what I mean? Or what I'm, the dangers of what I'm going through, and I'm, and I'm I'm not even there. So they come and raided the house again. Nick, when we're used to it, it's for us it became normal. <laughs> okay, it's all right. It's, you know what I mean? It's normal. It's, 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 it's disgusting. Again, all devices, all bank cards, and this is the thing that keeps getting me. All bank cards, always, every time we think of disclaimers into your banks, disclaimers into your that's banks. A, that, that's Intel. Right? They want to look at other crimes. Yeah, 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 exactly. And this is now you know, knowing working with other people and 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 you know and that, is, that we said to you outside. My wife said, you know, you're not going to remember that comment. Every time they made a comment, his paperwork's too it's too tidy. His paperwork's too tidy. You know, oh, it makes our job easier. And and, and I have everything I've got, I I'm quite OCD when it comes to my paperwork. I like to keep. Uh, one thing my father taught me in England: in this country, you need paperwork. <laughs> That's all you need in this country. Back home, you don't need anything. <laughs> <laughs> Back home, you just need his name. <laughs> uh, and that, you know, so one of the things, as a kid, he told us, right? In this country, you need, but in those days, you needed a good bank manager, you needed a driving license, and a good accountant. And you're set for life if you have them. <laughs> and so that was part of the deal. You know, and it's just. All the all the work they did, and it was just it was it was to me. Then there's, there's some are darky, and there's some are more, some are more, some are more. I, I'll, I'll never get to the bottom of it. Then I, it's, it's like you're turning into a conspiracy nut as well. Then you're thinking, yeah. I, I am going like, my overthinking thing. But you know, but you're going through this. You're going through this major, major pressure, yeah, especially giving it so much energy. Yeah, you don't want to keep giving it energy. Do you think you'll get to the bottom of it, Tommy? Or have you kind of flipped a chapter on it? I'm not going to let him yeah, <laughs> get to flick I a just, chapter. Um, that's it. <laughs> Something has to have gone on in her life. I, I think something's gone on in Barrow. Yeah. Do you feel sorry? I, 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 I think, I, 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 I think after, there's after something. through a few things recently, yeah. Barrow seems like, you saw the Liverpool scandal, yeah? Within mm -hmm. the Labour Party, yeah. the mayor and all that were at it. Yeah, all yeah, at yeah. It. It's all kept in-house. It looks like something like that's been going on in Barrow for a long time. No outsiders are wanted in there. They've got it on lock within the council. Council, yeah. For all sorts of stuff. Is that why they wanted you out, you think? Probably why they want me out. Probably why they didn't want a new new man coming in and throwing his throwing himself up around. Yeah. 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 Where do you go forward for the future, Tommy? Because now I know you're kind of open-minded. People are starting to see you in a different light. Like, where do you go? I've just got more documentaries to make, more stories to come. You know what I said to Nicola last night? Go on. I said, Nicola, what do I see? I said, in 25 years' time, 20 to 25 years' time, I can see him being Prime Minister. I want me here, And Labour. And Labour. It's <laughs> 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 ain't inverted. <laughs> I'll, be your, I'll, be the, I'll be your Chancellor then. <laughs> With four wives. As Tate put it. Yeah, it and, the, and the love more. Because <laughs> that's what I see in the comments. He's going to convert soon. He's going to convert soon. You know what it is? Because at the minute, people, are, I, it's nothing I haven't said. It's nothing I haven't said, yeah? I do see negatives. I do see positives, yeah? But I see a lot of problems. And I like, see a lot of problems that no one's... I'm in a position where most people aren't willing to talk about these problems. Most people are too scared to talk about them problems. Most people don't want to lose their jobs or their careers. Someone's got to talk about them. Someone's got to highlight them. Someone's got to explore them. Someone's got to do that. And I'm, I'm in that position. And people, and people have a... I think a lot of people have a faith in what I'm saying. So I just want to continue to shed a, shine a light on corruption wherever it is. Yeah, fair play. Yeah. For anybody that's watching that's maybe went against you, spoke out against you, deleted you, what would you say to them who never believed in you? Never judge a book, never judge a book by its cover, is it? No, then maybe that won't fit. It's just, just let's not be so judgmental. Right? And you people that know you, you know. And you, you just don't, and it's, it's, it's the gravest of accusations this was. And for, and for people to just make assumptions, you know, and jump on it, and it'll give it a, support or pump it it's wrong it's wrong we know it shouldn't be like that either go and seek the seek knowledge of it get information about it and then come and speak and it's like as, as i say as I, when it when all went up i started doing lives when it blew up and i thought you know what and everyone's thinking you're going crazy what are you doing you're getting good, more, good, thinking more attraction i'm like no fuck them out fuck them i'm not i'm not gonna sit down i'm not gonna let them beat me like this this is wrong i'm being stitched up more than one way i'm not gonna let it happen and so i just 
did me the thing and uh, and uh, in my lives and everything I said anybody is more than welcome anybody wants to come and sit down and have a discussion like a man come or if you want a one on one I, even I said that I said yeah, I'll, tell me I'll tell you where I am I'll fucking come I'm not scared but don't be doing that and it, it, it went on in the town even I did one of my very first videos I did there's a guy called Andy Bickle and he was friends of friends close circles and they were like he started to put the next thing he's like yeah I know he's a nonce I thought humour, so I did a video of walking, we were walking to go and muck out the horses and I'm walking down the promenade and this is video and I went, there are everybody, Andy Bickle's done this, 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 he's saying this, said, everybody do me a favour, if they see him, give him a hug and when you give him a hug, I'll donate a pound to a charity. <laughs> 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 and that's how I started taking him on and then, then basically, the, the, it, to some people they were like, oh yeah, he's cocky, look how cocky he is, and you, you know. And again, I'm a, I'm a nobody. I'm a, a little man in uh, in, in Barrow, doing, just doing his own, uh, minding his day to day life, and just going, getting on with the mon mundane tasks of life. Just you know, just just getting on with it. And the crap we got, it was just unbelievable. So, but I thought, I'm not, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. Not my yeah, watch. What did your MP say to you last? Oh God, about me. Yeah, we we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it? that now. So, yeah, so I went down to the MP, and uh, he brought a conversation about Tommy Robinson, and I, I even said to him, I said, I'm a closet Tory. Right, <laughs> and he was like, "Well, what, what, you know, what's your relationship with Tommy?" I said, uh, "I think I said Tommy's going to expose a lot more things." I was and basically they weren't happy, was it? They weren't happy with him. I said, "You know, I'm going to invite Tommy to my house." <laughs> the the assignment fell. They just put his hand. And <laughs> 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 I said, "I'm going to invite him to me." I said, "Nobody can talk." And they was like, "Why do you go on Facebook?" So now this is the even though I've been exonerated and everything's out there, it's clear. The, the, the advice I was given is uh, go off Facebook, stay away from Tommy, now he's got agendas, <laughs> and just carry on. So, what do you mean? So, go off Facebook. Uh, I have to be told by you who I should be quiet, with basically. Yeah, shut up yeah. and be quiet. And then, why? I just thought, you know what, I'm wasting my time here. Absolutely wasting my time. You've got to stand up and fight. Tommy, what's all your social media links now? I know you're back on Twitter. Twitter, Tommy, Rob Tommy Robinson, NS on Twitter. On, and then uh, official Tommy Robinson, Tommy Robinson official on Rumble. Mm -hmm. They're the only ones I'm allowed on. So, so far. So far, yeah, mate. Yeah. So far. What you For getting? anybody that's watching that's maybe going through something like you, maybe some people are pointing their fingers and they don't see a way out, that everybody's turned against them, what advice would you have for them? Uh, stay strong. And if you know you're innocent, then you've got nothing to worry about. If you know you're innocent, you've got nothing to worry about. And then just contact Tommy. Who are you going to call? <laughs> Would you like to finish up on anything, Tommy? Uh, nah, mate, nah. It's good. I just, as I said, just for his family, it's, it's, it was good to know that they're in a different place. Must have been for real. Mo, yourself, do you like to finish up on anything, brother? Uh, well, the uh, moving forward, what we're doing is uh, Nicola and her friends have set up, set up the whole trust. Because the way Maggie Oliver helps, and there's not much people out there, really, but going through this with the support for the wrongly accused and, the, and of, of, of abuse victims. And if you put them two together, there's mental health, the biggest of it. None of, nobody's focusing on all three. And we, we've, we're quite fortunate that we've got, I know a lot of doctors within the culture, within the family, friends and everything. I've, we've had long chats with them. Uh, we've got legal teams that are now jumping on board, friends that are barristers, Supreme, uh, the, the, the Woodford Green is in, sorry, and he's a Supreme Court barrister, uh, Wahidul Rahman and Mia, and he's jumping on with us. Uh, we've got uh, doctor's side, we've got creative, uh, uh, sort of bubble creative support, uh, yeah. Jason. They're all coming together. So we're all building uh, like a, a, a network and an organisation and like these people that are reaching out to us and like you're just saying if there is a genuine victim there are the wrongly accused of anything and you, you don't know what to do advice, advice anything right once that we are officially going to be launching in about 14 days I think and it's going to be the Halt Trust and please uh, get get behind that support us and uh, follow us and see what we do for for, 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 the, for the people Lads, listen, people. fair play for not bowing down and standing up for what he's believed in. Fair play for yeah. standing up for this man, Tommy. Yeah. You could have walked away at any time. Yeah. Like, for coming on today, guys. Yeah, healthy thanks. discussion, man. Thanks, mate. I wish you all the best for the Thank future. You. And hopefully, Sorry. everything Cheers, works out. Oh Take care, lads. Yeah. Cheers, Thank man. Thank you.